All right. Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club. Stop and chat. Today we have a very special, special, special returning guest. Mr. Mike Vallelee is back with us. How are you, dude? I'm good, man. Thanks, Chris. Bro. <laughs> Yo, Ron, dude, it's been a minute. Hell yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't remember last time I saw you, man, but, you know, I just always remember you just being just just a righteous guy man always cool every time we ever came in contact with each other and that's always appreciated man you know it's just like just good memories of, of the times i did spend with you you know likewise bro um one that stands out to me i think was uh slam city jam i think one of those times and i definitely i, I remember having like a nice conversation with you bro so yeah, bro. It's definitely good to to see you again. Wait, Slam Anti City Jam? Wow. Yeah. When, when was the last Slam City Jam? Before you were born, man. <laughs> you were born. It's got to be like early 2000s, right? Good God. Yeah. I mean, I only recall going to maybe two of them, possibly. Yeah. So, um, fuck, I don't know the year, man. I, 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 these years are just flying by, bro. So I'm Oof. just. I always wanted to go to one of those. How were those? Those looked insane. They were so fun. Yeah. You know, from, I mean, I always got a really, really great vibe from, from Vancouver and Canada in, 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 in itself. So I always had a great time. And yeah. plus yeah, I was young, were, happy go lucky. Special, special times for me, Slam yeah. City Jam, you know, that's like prime time. Yeah. Prime time. <laughs> well, listen, Mike, you're looking good. The beard has disappeared. You just have some scruff now. Dude. It's coming back in. Yeah. Okay. I was going to okay. say, it's been a while since I've seen him. It's been like maybe like four days since I've seen you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just saw him the dude tour a couple days ago. You guys just ran into each other in, in Des Moines. Yeah. Des Moines. It's been taking me a while not to pronounce the S. You know, I don't want to get in trouble with the mm. Des Moines, Des Moinesians. Yeah, man. We'll kick your ass. You I, say those S's. <laughs> so I've learned. So I've learned through some DMs, man. Des Moines. <laughs> no, no, no. It's Des Moines. It's Des Moines. But listen, so glad to have you back on the show. Raining. You hold the reigning title of longest nine club episodes ever, man. Many people have tried to try to break that record, man, but they can't <laughs> do it, dude. Yeah, the most amazing part was you only asked one question. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just said hello. I yeah. think I just said hello, and it went straight into you know black flag shows and little kid and all oh, your board and no, it was amazing because out of all the nine club episodes, listen, people always tell me their favorites. Uh, oh, I love this one. One, I love this one and this and that. Your name always gets brought up, you know? I mean, I, I would look at a YouTube video and see five hours and I'd be t terrified. But people yeah. loved love that episode, Mike. You are such a fabulous storyteller. It, it, people said it, it, it felt like an hour. It just it went by so fast. I've gotten the same feedback. It's incredible. I can't, I really can't believe it. Um, I would, I can't imagine spending five hours on anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I mean, it's a long time ago now, yeah. maybe, I guess it's like 10 years ago, I had that uh, uh, battle at the barracks with Chris Cole, and I still hear about that. Yeah. Is that funny? Oh, wow. That's and amazing. It's just, I don't know. It, it, I mean, it's really, it feels really good to get that kind of feedback from people about stuff like this. Sure. Um, but, you know, I think, I think the timing, the timing of when I came on the Nine Club and the conversation we had, I think it was, I've told all those stories before. Right. It just was, I think finally I was far enough removed from professional skating as, you know, seen as a competitor with other people mm -hmm. or in the industry as something that someone had to deal with mm -hmm. that I was able to just kind of tell those stories and have them just live without it having any kind of, uh, wasn't selling anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. I, I, but I love that, though, because, I mean, you were just, you know, it's like you said, you've told those stories before. Some might be over here. Some might be over here. But to com combine them into one yeah. and hear this mm -hmm. continuous story, you know, from almost start to, to damn near present time. And that's why I love the Nine Club. It's, it's It just goes on this like timeline. You know, yeah. and it, it, to me, it's it's just fascinating. And I think a lot of people got that out of that, too, was just the way that you could tell a story and the, the way that you could actually put details into that story without without just, you know, going off on some weird tangents, you know, mm -hmm. like like most people do. So, yeah, he stayed on track, stayed on track. Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> dude. It was amazing. 
But we've had a few people come in here and say, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to beat Mike V. I'm going to beat his time. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, buddy, let's go. The yeah. only other person that maybe came close was Jamie Thomas. Jamie Thomas, right. Jamie oh, yeah, Thomas. Jamie. Yeah, you yeah. can definitely talk. I think he wants his. I think he wants to try to beat it now. It's not even. It's not even about talking. It's about telling us this the story almost. Yeah, yeah. Because like both of them have had amazing stories so far, and like that's what I mean. That's but that's why, why people resonated with exactly. It, yeah, yeah. You know. Plus, you fill in. You know, with the nine club people, fill in the holes that mm -hmm. that that the general public want, you know wants to know. You know, and has always maybe wondered about. You know, so amazing. Well, listen, we won't do five hours tonight, but we'll we'll try. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> no attempts. Okay, 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 okay. But listen, you just what, you're you're in Des Moines now. How how is that going? Why did you want to make the move out there? It's going great. Is it? Uh, my family and I we we love it here. Amazing. We just love it. Um, you know, people. I mean, it's the most commonly asked question <laughs> that I've had since I moved. You know, it's like social media and all that it just people just why 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 <laughs> but you know no one here has really asked me why they just say welcome, welcome. to Iowa. amazing they already know what they got they know why <laughs> there you go mm. i don't know why you know i don't think i've maybe i've been to iowa maybe on a tour dude, or door. something yeah, sure. i Passed just went through. there for the first Definitely. time it was super nice dude yeah. super mellow and nice and it felt comforting to be there to be honest was it on your radar already mike yeah i played here in uh 2013 mm. um i played downtown at a place called the gas lamp and after sound check I walked outside of the venue as I, as I usually do, like after sound check is like my time. Cause I've been driving all day. We loaded in, did the sound check. I get an hour or two to myself before the show. Right. And so I went for a walk as I do. And uh, I walked out of this place called the gas lamp and right across the street from the gas lamp is this sculpture park. And it's, it's unbelievable. It's just so beautiful. Hmm. And I, I, I was like, where am I? I didn't even like, I wasn't even aware of what city I was in. I was like, what is this? So I walked through the park and then I kept walking through the downtown and I walked all the way through downtown and then over the river, the Des Moines river okay. into the East village. And then I got my phone out and I called my wife and I said, I'm in the coolest city and I don't even really know where I'm at. Amazing. You know? Amazing. And so that's when I kind of became aware of Des Moines. Hmm. Um, but you know, the, the one of the real main things that attracted me to live in here is the bike culture. So mm -hmm. here in, in Des Moines, you can, I, my house, where I, where I live is basically just a, a minute or two from a bike trail. And when I get, if I get on that bike trail, I can go in any direction, north, south, east, or west for upwards to a hundred to 150 miles without leaving a trail. Whoa. It's paved trail the whole way. Talking about mountain bikes. Paved, paved trail. Oh, so just transportation wise or wow. road bike. Um, but also mountain bikes right behind my house. Also, I live with some woods behind me and uh, I have access to mountain bike trails, which I'd never really mountain biked before. Hmm. That's become a real, a real fun thing that I love to do. Amazing. So, but I mean, you can, you can bike across Iowa. You could bike across the whole state on paved trails. I mean, huh. I mean, sometimes you have to be on some streets, surface streets, farm roads, but generally every, every county, every community has uh, facilitated bikers. It's amazing. More so than anywhere I've ever seen in the world. Wow. I mean, even Europe has a bike culture, you know, Copenhagen has a bike culture, but here in Iowa, the bike culture is unlike anywhere I've ever seen. Wow. wow I can't even, I can't even picture that. Yeah, and a lot of it. A lot of the times too, the paved trails are like old railroad tracks. So where the where, where there were railroad tracks, they just got rid of those and then they just paved it. So what you're saying, literally, you could get out of your house and go on these bike trails and kind of go into town or go into different places. Yeah, I could ride my bike. I could ride my bike from my house to the new skate park without ever having to get on the street. That's incredible. Wow. I love that. How far yeah. away is that park? Probably 15 minutes from my house no way. on a bike. How do you like that park, man? I just went there and that place was insane. I love all skate parks. I love the crappiest skate park in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, the, the park here is, I guess they say it's the biggest in the nation. And it's a pretty incredible looking park. I, I've only really, I've only taken a few runs on it. What the? I thought I'd turn this crap off. <laughs> I think the, your bread is done. 
I've only ridden the park a few times, mm -hmm. and um, but I look forward to this summer. I think I'll probably skate it quite a bit. If I could find a, a good group of guys to, to go out there and ride with, you know. I'm um, sure it'll happen. Yeah. You know, I've already met so many great people. I mean, I got so many people I, uh, you know, ride bikes with and stuff like that. So it's not going to be hard to meet skaters. Right, you know, right. Now, is this a park? Does it have like a big full pipe thing in the middle of it or no? No. Not somewhere else. No. Okay. It was just when they did the dew tour. I don't know if you saw, like literally opened oh, a week before the dew tour. I got you. Uh, yeah. I got you. Okay. So it's like, it was like brand, brand new. Wow. And it's like super long. And like he said, it was the big, it's the biggest one in the nation. 15 minutes from your house. That's yeah. incredible. Super sick. The thing about skate parks with me is what I love about them isn't for me. I love it for other people. Mm, right. You know, mm. I love that communities have facilitated skaters. I love that new skaters and anyone who rides a skateboard has a place to go. Absolutely. You know, they have a place to ride. That's super important. That was um, a huge part of when I started skating. That was a dream of mine that one day people would care, yeah. you know, and here in Des Moines, they really show how they care. They put the skate park as a centerpiece in the downtown on the river. I mean, it's not tucked away in some, you know, that's so rare. neighborhood no one wants to go to. It's it's come one, come all, wow. come to the heart of the city. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah. It's front and center. Cool. Just say here yeah, you go. It's beautiful, man. Like right, like right in the water right there. <laughs> it's got an amazing looking bridge right there, too. It's a super cool city. Wow. Very, very scenic. Yeah. I gotta go visit I there. It. I gotta go visit. Maybe I'll come see you with the gas light. What is it? The gas lamp? Gas lamp. <laughs> yeah. Come see you with the gas lamp. <laughs> But um, and then so you're you, you've settled in. I uh, Des Moines, Des Moines is good. <laughs> Gotta watch that S, man. Yeah. Gotta watch, watch it. it. Watch it. Slips out. Once, um, once Chris says it one way, it's hard for him not to say it again. Like I have, that. To, I have to train my brain. <laughs> so you're all settled in, and um, well, the garage land obviously transferred over. You got everything set up in there because I know that even. God, it's like you had your whole warehouse there, you know, to, to move and also the warehouse and your your furniture. It's a lot. Yeah, we, we're, we're, we're settled in, although we're going to start. Uh, the house we bought was pretty old and had, nothing had been done to it for a long time. So we've mm -hmm. got a lot of work to do. Gotcha. And we're starting that soon. So we'll be unsettled, okay. you know, <laughs> with construction, you know, that's how it goes. Yeah. Oh. Um, but I mean, yeah, we got here. We <laughs> arrived in Des Moines. On uh, New Year's Eve one. That is Fresh. a hell of a New Year's resolution, man. Yeah, and there was, uh, I mean, it's a pretty uh, pretty cold and snowy winter, mm. um, but we en we enjoyed it. We, Amazing. You know, we just, we had just embraced it and had a lot of fun with it. Um, I did a lot of hiking in the snow, a lot of running in the snow. I rode my bike in the snow. Sick. And of course, I skated. I filmed a video part I, in the snow. I <laughs> saw that. I put, on, I put on a sweater when I watched that. I was cold. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. But I think that's rad, though, because, you know, coming from California, you, you know, season, we don't, it, seasons blend together here. You know, maybe we'll get some rain. Maybe it's cold. Maybe it's hot. But we, we have great weather. So to have that change, like, I love it when it rains. Yeah. Like let it rain for a week. I will. I will love that because we. Yeah. I don't. We don't see that. But you know. But even if you live in California, people are still going to complain about the weather. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Anywhere you go in the world, people complain about the weather. That's just the last thing that I do. I could care less about what the weather is. Right. I can't control that. I can just control. You know, Bruce Lee has a great quote about you know in the winter he shivers, in the summer he sweats, and the rest of his life is in his control. There you go. That's I just embrace the winter, you know? Okay, right. now it's snowing. What can, what fun can we have with this? Build a snowman. We did that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Got to make sure you have coal and carrots, though, for the nose. Yeah, we had rocks and sticks. Rocks and sticks. <laughs> okay. okay. Primitive, a primitive snowman. We'll make it work. Yeah. I'm going to come out there to Des Moines. I'm going to go to the gas lamp, and then I'm going to build a snowman with Mike V. It's nice. Another segment. Another segment. By the way, that segment we did with the uh, crop plant... I still get people hitting me. We just did it one where I recently with Andy Anderson and everybody went back and watched you yeah. and mine. And we, I'm getting another resurgence of that. Well, again, that, that session that we had in my driveway, yeah, the Chris Cole battle, the barracks and the nine club. These are things I hear about all the time. <laughs> Add them to public domain, the barnyard board and you right. know, a few other something happened in a parking lot or something. I <laughs> love that. I love that. <laughs> 
add that it's, to the top of the list. Stop, man. Uh, it's amazing. I, it, it's crazy. But it's so funny what people latch on to, you know? Yeah. I just think it was a good time in your driveway and we were just having fun and having a laugh and you were cha- you know, cheering for me. And it, it was just like, it was funny, but it was wholesome at the same time, you know? And you were giving me a little shit too. I, yeah, I was. that's what I was a little concerned about was um, <laughs> that... The dynamic of it just kind of forced me to give you some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't, I, if I was actually really trying to help somebody learn the trick, I would, of course, never talk to them. That <laughs> I don't know. But it's I me. Like I'm supposed to pick on you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I feed off of that, though. You know, I feed. But I, I think it translated well. You know, I think people. It's funny. I, I've, it. uh, uh, you know, people ask me all the time, how do I, how, hey, can you show me how to do a street plant? And, uh, so in, since that aired or since we did that, I've been in situations where I'm actually really trying to teach someone or help them understand it. And then it turns out they have the same learning disability that you have. It is a disability. And so I go in the same direction I went with you. Yeah. And then they go, then they go, oh, crop plant. They already know what it is. They already know. Oh, see? See? So dead. Listen, I mean, I... That trick, it, it's hard. It is to do a street play. It is it difficult, really is. bro, to have that arm strength. And I you remember, I couldn't, I could barely even hold myself up with two feet on the ground in my arm. I think I said this when we were, when we were together doing that, but um, people, there was like rumors that I was a gymnast and then, and then you know, oh, well, you got upper body strength. That, that, I was not a gymnast and <laughs> I wasn't, had any more upper body strength than anyone else. I had to do street plants. Like I, I, I saw inverts on vert. I did not have necessarily access to vert, at least not on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do them in the street. I'd probably seen a photo of Mark Gonzalez or somebody doing one in the street. Like, it's just something I had to do. It's like any, it's like any kid getting a skating today and seeing something that speaks to him and going out and learning how to do that. Right. Well, I see Daniel, Daniel Castillo, you know, he's a small dude. He doesn't have, you know, he's not a arm wrestler or gymnast or, you know, he doesn't have a lot of upper upper body strength, but he does. Are are there arm wrestlers? (laughs) I don't know. I'm just saying he's, what I'm trying to say is his muscles aren't there. I'm not, you know, without having to insult the guy too much, you know, but uh, he's, uh, (laughs) Yeah, but he's did ho hos and all this, you know. He's handstanding, and it's it's so. I get what you're saying. It's not about that, like you know, being brute. No, so to speak. it's, it's muscle, muscle, muscle yeah, memory. Exactly, too. it's yeah. muscle. He's that been just, doing that for yeah. years, and like now he yeah. just jumps right back into it and feels you know comfortable because right. right. he's been doing it. He's know? been doing it. Yeah, right. I had no experience with a street plan or anything like that. Not even a handstand, really. <laughs> you beat me up, Mike. You beat you beat me up. That was a good time. I had to go. Uh, I mean, Chris, that's Relax cool that you you got you, you went outside of your you know your box right there. You, right. you tried something new. That's I love cool. It. I love it. And who else to be? Tr- uh, str- I mean, come on, Mike yeah, V with the street perfect, plan, perfect person to do. It. And you, we know what I did get a lot of too, Mike, was your last name. I yeah, heard yeah. so much, so many people say that they've been pronouncing your name wrong for twenty plus years. Should, should I have, yeah. dude? Yeah. It's still really hard for me to pronounce it that way. I still. I still have a hard time doing it. But I got that a lot. Like, oh yeah. my God, I can't, I feel so bad. I just, I've been saying his name wrong right. the whole time. I, I, I don't know. I'm probably repeating myself now, but um, yeah, I don't even remember what we really talked about the last time I was on, but I say my name wrong to people so that they, they know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> Is that weird? If I tell a story like that involves like somebody saying my name or whatever, I'll say Vallely. I'll just say it. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. It's not worth having. I don't care. And it's not worth having an argument about. Like I'm getting mad. You said my name wrong. (laughs) Well, I have that same problem. That's what I'm saying. I I don't even want to correct people anymore. I just let it go. I let it go. Jerron has the same problem because people call him Jerome or Jaron. Yeah. You know, different things. So it's hard. It was hard for me to get Jeff Rowley. 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 I keep right. calling it Rowley. It's another guy yeah, that we've been saying same, his name wrong. Yeah, same. Jeff Rowley. You just call everybody Harry. Okay, Harry. Well, listen. <laughs> we got... Uh... No, but a lot of great things came out of this episode. You're you're very... Um... You know, you're a very fun person to be around. That's why I'm, I, you know, I, at first I was a little bummed. I was like, oh man, Mike moved to, because we had talked about before maybe doing some type of part two or teaching me another trick. 
And I'm like, God, he just moved to Des Moines. We didn't, we didn't act on that quick enough, you know, but hopefully there'll be a time where I come out there, you come out here and we'll, we'll, we got to make that happen for the people. I thought it was cool. You guys did the first part. You went out, you actually went and did the crop plant. Yeah. That's actually pretty impressive, Chris. I had to get my hands dirty. <laughs> We'll always order stuff. And I don't know if people realize that. A lot of people think that we just get gifted stuff and we do, but we, we like to support the companies. You know, we, we buy a lot of stuff for, for our raffles for the experience show. And when, when stuff comes out for street plant, we, uh, Raj is the first person online to, uh, to buy, to buy some and get it in here, you know? So cool. Appreciate it, man. Skaters supporting skaters. Yes. That's what we're all about here. Definitely, bro. We got a, we got some boards up on the wall here, don't we? Well, well, always, Quite a bro. few. Look, we got the uh, the barnyard yeah. right here. Had that. Had that when I was younger. <laughs> you had that? That was your... I did. I definitely wow. had that. I recall exactly when I got that thing. Oh, really? Yeah. At the, at the Northridge Val Surf. This is when, yeah, that, they no longer have that Val Surf anymore. And that's... Fuck, I forgot exactly when that got... Yeah, took away. But um, yeah, that was definitely one of my uh, highlights from getting a board from Valsurf. Did you know at the time what you were getting, like this change in the shapes? And oh, everything? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, no, okay. I, didn't, I mean, no, I, no, no, I liked I liked the graphic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the time. So um, that was more of something that I was because this is like right when I st first started getting into like, you know, I hear, I'm like, sure you hear a lot of stories like that, Mike. I've been doing this for so long and had these boards that, you know, really mattered to people when they came out and be, mm -hmm. so be associated with that and be a part of people's lives because of that it's really meaningful i mean sure yeah. like, you've got to pinch yourself all the time it's how could this even be real you know totally. dude absolutely you know what's funny is like you know and i hate to keep going on about the nine club episode but i mean to to me that was very monumental as well because <clears throat> i didn't i wasn't really i didn't grow up in that time period you know the the, the elephant, the, the Mike Vallely, uh, the first pro model and your graphic, they wanted to give you this other graphic, but you wanted to have that graphic because it was in line with what you grew up, you know, and, and the, that Powell, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say, that Powell, uh, carry on the, carry aesthetic, on the, the aesthetic of, the aesthetic of yeah. it, you know, and I, I just love that kind of stuff. Cause I, I learned a lot during that episode, you know, and I think it's just yeah, important. You know, what was really crazy was, um, Lance Mountain called me after the episode came out and he just was like, he's just, man, it was Mike. It was really great. I'm glad you told all those stories and that you, and that you fought for that graphic. He's like, cause he was on the other side of that. You know, mm. there was just something about that, that just like all these years later, like struck him as that was, that was cool, man. That was mm -hmm. cool that, you know, the pressure was on and you wouldn't buckle and you stayed true to yourself and you fought for something against people that were my heroes. You know, like I was standing up to people that I really admired, right? but I just disagreed with where, where they wanted to go with my name and my skating. And uh, Lance just thought that was just, he just really thought it was, it was an admirable kind of thing to do as a young person, you know? Sure. I love that. And you at were the, at the time it was at the time it was a very difficult situation yeah. and he was, he hit, he was, you know, he had been involved in getting me on the team and he cared about me and he, he felt a lot of pain through all that kind of stuff, you know? Right. And you were how old at the time? When the conversation started, I was, I was still only 16. That's cool. Wow. Could I couldn't even yeah. imagine getting on like chocolate yeah. and then telling, you know, having to fight Rick and Mike <laughs> for a certain style graphic. Like yeah. I couldn't even imagine that, like. At 16 years old, I'm I'm just ec ecstatic yeah. to be where yeah. I am and just You're humble, okay, yeah, humble, cool, yeah. You want to give me a blank board? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I I'm not. Imagine. You know, there, I'm sure. I'm sure that these kinds of things happened before the elephant board. Mm -hmm. But I was, I remained pretty vigilant about what my graphics were and what the story behind my graphics were and why a board was being made right. through most of my career. When I signed with Element in 2003, they said, we're licensing your name. Um, you know, you don't have a say in what, what oh, we put out. Whoa. Wow. And, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't invited into the art room because they, <laughs> I had a reputation. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, it's just the evolution of things, I guess. You sure. know, I don't mean to paint. I mean, Element was a great sponsor and they treated me great. And, I loved, sure. I loved being a part of it, but it was just a different, 
things had just changed by that time. You know, they didn't, none of the skaters really were involved in what their graphics were going to be or anything. It was just right. like, we had a job to do and they had a job to do. And it was that, that split, you know, which I don't agree with. It's not my version of skating, but I signed the contract. I was on the team. But I feel like at that point in time, you've, you've, you, you're, you're already Mike Vallely, right? You're already like back then in Powell, like you, you, you know, this was like your, like starting defining moment, right? Like having that yeah. board along with that graphic and stuff like that. Yeah, but but you know, I mean, I know what you're saying. You're not wrong, but at the same time, it's like, I to me, skateboards are sacred. Right. You know, and you can't just you can't just um, puke my name out onto a piece of wood. And yeah, that's yeah. not okay. Yeah. Was that hard for you to deal with that at that point? Well, I struggled with it. I mean there was pros and cons with everything, you know? Sure. Um, and uh, I was really glad, but, you know, I was, I signed with them when I was 33, you know, I say signed, that sounds kind of so <laughs> businessy. Uh, you know, I started skating for element when I was 33. Right. And uh, is that, wait, is that right? 33. Yeah, I guess so. And, um, and at that time I didn't, you know, I mean, my whole career, I've just, I've always felt like I've just been hanging on. Like, I can't believe I'm still allowed to do this. Mm -hmm. So I was just really glad to be with a company that was that front and center and had that good of a team and, and was investing money in skating. And we were able to travel all over the world. And, you know, I mean, I got to keep living my dream skating for elements. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I hate to, you know, it's like, I got the element, I had an element tattoo, you know, mm -hmm. and after I got off the team, I, I, I had it X'd out of my arm. Um, and so many people got upset at me that were element fans or something. <laughs> right. It wasn't, it was, it's kind of a joke. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like breaking up with a girlfriend. Like if you had your girlfriend's <laughs> yeah. name tattooed on you and you broke up with her, well, you cross, you're, there's a famous Norman Rockwell painting where it's like a bunch of names on a sailor's arm and they're yeah. all crossed out and he's got a new girl's name being <laughs> tattooed on it. That's kind of what, you know, um, so, so people really think I hate element or, you know, or I, no, nah, man, I'm so grateful. Yeah, right. I'm so grateful for, for Johnny Schiller and Ryan Kingman and Ryan DeWitt and the other people that were a part of that. And the, the guys that were on the team at that time, sure. it was a great time in my life, but it came to an end. And I was stupid enough to get a, 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 a sponsor's logo tattooed on me. So I was also stupid enough to put an X through it. Right. And it a bunch of people. Uh, was that, that was that your first time getting your sponsor's uh, tattoo? Well, I mean, my first tattoo ever was my pal Elephant Graphic. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Graphic's a little yeah, different, that's different though. for sure. For yeah. Sure. Right. That was a, that was a, that was like that was like recognition of a dream come yeah, true. Yeah, I made it. Mm -hmm. And, and the elephant represented that. so much to me. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I don't remember what my, oh, you know why I got the element tattoo? I think it's a pretty good story. Okay. Um, I was on the King of the Road mm. um, in 2005. And element, I talk about how, you know, we had a, a great team, a great team on both sides, like it, you know, running the company and also the skaters. Um, we went on King of the Road and uh, and Phelps said we couldn't bring Nija. You know, what? it was just like oh. cheating or something. I don't oh. know. What, I don't know the reason. Why he's <laughs> cheating. Yeah. We're gonna bring him a skater. Then. That's why he's yeah. on the team, dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But it was like it was like we they we, we were made to feel like we were lucky to be on king of the road like you guys are like elements like the sellout team or something mm. you know whatever um so no you could go on king of the road but no niger so but i was just like hey let's do this like sure. i i was very like you know serious about it like let's you know let's win every yeah. team i've ever been a part of i try to have like take on a leadership kind of role you know mm -hmm. mostly by example just i'm gonna skate hard you yeah, know sure. uh the first couple of days it, it felt like it was going okay but then all of a sudden our team just started unraveling like guys just stopped showing up stopped caring didn't think they had a chance so what's the point anyway wow. uh, a lot of beers were beginning to be consumed in the van whereas you know the first couple of days was beers at night <laughs> and it was like beers all day. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I started getting kind of uh, 
Well, I just felt like, I felt like we weren't a unified group. Mm, yeah. You know, I felt like the way that people thought about element at that time was like, that was where you went to sort of retire or something. Okay. You know, it was like Bam was on the team yeah. and I was on the team and later on Muska got on the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, a lot of legends on there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it was kind of like, it was kind of like, oh, why would you skate? Like, you know, you know how it goes, yeah. man. Oh, this team's cooler. This team's cooler. Why would you skate for Element? Oh, they're doing it for the paycheck or sure, something. Sure. And I hated all that kind of noise about the team. Like, I was proud to be on the team. So, uh, you know, one of the, one of the ways you can get points on King of the Road is you get a Thrasher tattoo. Right. So I got a skate and destroy tattoo. Okay. And while the guy was doing the skate and destroy tattoo on me, I said, you know what? Put an element logo on my other arm. And he's like, are you serious, dude? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man, because I, w I did it because we were on King of the Road and I wanted the other guys in the van on the team. It was like, just try to show them, Hey man, like, like I take this seriously. Hmm. Like I'm putting my heart and soul into this. Um, they did not get it. <laughs> they were like, "Why would you do that?" <laughs> it, well, I mean, if the tattoo artist is actually questioning yeah. it, you should be like, "Oh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know." Yeah, it's just one of those things, you know. Like, um, it, it, in that moment, it felt like the right thing to do. Um, really, I was just really trying to unify the team. I love that. I was trying to show them that, hey, I'll, I'll bleed. I'll bleed element, you know. Right. Um, it became a big joke. <laughs> yeah. I got people taking shots at me for it, you know. Yeah, it's you tried. Good. You yeah. tried. I mean, you listen, the, the, good the, effort the, sure. the <laughs> behind the scenes, it was there, right? The, the unification and the trying to get everybody No, together. it didn't work. I know, but it, it, the, the it thought. It didn't work, but that was what I was, that's what I was trying to do. Right. I, my heart was in the right place and yeah. trying to like, Look, we had like this great opportunity. We were on the King of the Road thing, and I thought we had a great opportunity to show like the, the abilities and the talents of our skaters. Mm -hmm. um, I was skating with a um, an injured ankle, like I had a really bad ankle, but I but I ended up getting the most points for our team. I think I like doubled the points of anyone else on our team. Oh my gosh! Or even I think I got more points than everyone else put together. Something stupid Amazing. like that. <laughs> Amazing! I love that. And uh, and Phelps at the end of the thing phelps came up to our our group you know we we're all just the whole element team standing there and he's just like the old man got more points than all you suckers you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we started amazing. giving them all a hard time you know the camaraderie on something especially like the king of the road it's got to yeah. be there yeah, yeah. or it, it's for not i mean i think i was desperately reaching for it i've other than the short period of time that i was skating for black label during the sort of label kills era mm -hmm. i don't i've never really been a part of you know a team like i always thought like uh like it, it would be so cool to skate for a team like girl mm -hmm. you know when when that was like th this unit of people they were so tight they were such all good friends like i always wanted to be a part of something like that you know right. but i always I always had a lone wolf kind of thing. And I was always just kind of like the other skater on a team. I was, you know, I, I had like, either I was like the spotlight guy, you know what I mean? I, just, sure. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, no, I, I get yeah, it. I get totally. what you're saying. hundred percent. You know, it was never, I never felt that like, it's never part of something that was like, where I, I felt like I was able to contribute, but everyone else around me was contributing at the same type right. of level or in their own way. Right. Or we, or that we were actually all really friends and we all skated together, you know? Right. Yeah. I had friends I skated with. I mean, Ed Templeton and I, you know, mm -hmm. we, we were on new deal together and we started a company after that together and we were so tight and we skated together every day, but that's like one person. That's one person at one one season of my life. Sure, you know? sure. Uh, never had that with any of the teams I skated for. Um, I had that with Christian Svitek, and I've been friends with him since I met him when he got on Black Label. Wow, I love that. But, you know, we've had we our careers have been in different places. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the girl and chocolate thing has been great. You know, when I first that, that that's what allured me to that. I mean, it was you know first the world industries blind that that kind of family vibe, and then it went into girl and chocolate, and I just kind of followed along and like I want to be a part of that. You know, and there were it was like the Eric Costins and the the big boys. You know, and then but everybody had their 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 place. 
you know, and it was really a, I mean, drunk at a test is really a uh, cohesive, fun family. You know, they say family and it it really was. Yeah. It still is. Yeah, definitely. It was a parent. You could you could yeah. see that. But I want to talk about too because you know the street plant stuff and you you had just said, you know, you didn't want the, you know, the the graphics mean something and you don't just want to spit something out. And you know, it's kind of what, you know, a lot of companies do nowadays. They they're just trying to meet the the demand or the mm-hmm. the drop that month, you know, they just throw out yeah. graphics and everything. But with street plant, I mean, how do you you come you you really come up with these special you know, addition boards and you work with, you know, like Chris Pastris and all this stuff, like how, what's your process for, you know, coming out with board graphics and releases and maybe remakes and stuff like that? I've always just kind of operated like, on, uh, like, here's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, this would be fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and always wanted to keep uh, some level of spontaneity in what we do where it's not overly, um, you know, too forward too looking too far ahead into the future and planning things and Mm. but you know since since the start of the pandemic um everything's changed everything's changed and uh i have to now like i I have to i'm planning 2022 for street plan wow and i never i i never really wanted to operate in that way why now are you planning on is it because of the board shortage and the if I don't figure that out, if I don't know what boards I'm going to order when, I won't get boards. Right. Yeah. Right. The demand is too great. Mm. So, um, so it's changed the way I have to, you know, project what we do as a company. Um, it's not for. It's not. It's not terrible. It's not. Once I had an understanding of it, it's it's all it's all okay. Mm. Um, just. I, at first I was like uh, conflicted about the whole thing. Cause I was just like, Oh, it just seems like, it just seems like it feeds into a supply and demand kind of thing, as opposed to give, I like the freedom of just creativity. Yeah. And you know, you have a, I was able to many times have an idea and within 30 to 60 days have a board out. You know? Now it's wow, what, yeah. uh, three to six months. More, more. more. Wow. Yeah. Can you actually, like plan out maybe shapes and then maybe work on the graphics later at a later date. Can you like, how, how does this work? If there's, there's wiggle room in there. It's just a matter of figuring it out. You got to kind of uh, project how many boards, Mm. you know, and then you have some time to figure out graphics and shapes and stuff, but you got to order the wood way in advance. I'm pretty conservative when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like I, you know, but the industry mentality right now is like selling like hotcakes. So if you make it, you can sell it. Right. But I can't just make something just to sell it. It has to have a reason for existing. It has to have a story. There has to be an engagement with an artist An idea has gone back and forth and we've developed this thing and it just has to have that kind of fingerprint on it. Right. You know, and not to say that other companies, they work with great artists. They have great graphics, but they also are. So many of them are in a in a, you know. Here's the series. It's out. It's yeah. done. Here's the series. It's out. It's done. Right. And we want we want to create graphics that can last longer, um, stick around, mm-hmm. and and have a story behind. It's not just it's not just a picture on the bottom of the board. There's a story that comes with it. Right. And, uh, we're still going to do that. We've. You know, I'm just kind of, I, I just have new challenges with it. And that's fine. That's just the way it goes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's super interesting. Because like I said, you, you, man, that every time you come out with stuff, it's like, whoa, like Roger's like, I just ordered street plant boards. So yeah. You're going to be here. Like, you know, I'm like, oh mm-hmm. shit. Okay. Like he's on top of it, man. And like, yeah. you know, for Roger to do that, it's got to be you know, pretty damn special. You can tell there's a lot of love from when he makes something, when Mike makes something, there's a lot of love in that product. And that's why you can see that on the boards themselves. So that's, what's really cool. Yeah. And you sign every board with the thing. Like, I mean, come on, dude, you know, it's incredible. I just uh, always had this very idealistic idea about what a skateboard company wants. Yeah. Because I don't have investors or partners or distributors or, anybody else coming into my garage to tell me what to do. I get to do it how I want to do it. <laughs> Could you imagine like the guy who has to come into like Mike V's garage and tell him what to do? Wow. Whoa. 
how do I say this without it sounding like uh, like negative? It's mm. it's just it's not negative. It's just, but my whole career was that what you just said. You know, my whole professional skate career was an ongoing dialogue mm. between me and a sponsor, me and a company, right. me and a brand. Um, the only time I felt like I was completely free was on my actual skateboard. The yeah. business of professional skating was not something that I ever was able to uh, rec- reconcile. Interesting. You know? It was just a difficult thing for me. I mean, I did good business for people. My mm. board sold. I my sho- my shoes sold, yep. and and I did have good, really great relationships with a lot of the companies I worked with. But ultimately, there's always that moment where they're going to try to tell you what's up. (laughs) And sometimes they're right, but sometimes they're not. And that's a hard thing to that's a hard, you know, distance to bridge, you know. Absolutely. This this might sound silly, but did you ever have like an agent or any or like some sort like that to do deals for you? Yeah. Biggest mistake I ever made. Really? Why? Well, number one, letting anyone else get put their hands in my, you know, in my pocketbook. Okay. You know? okay. <laughs> That's a good reason. Like, That's a good reason. My skateboarding was something that, you know, my career was something I manifested, mm. you know, the relationships I have in skating are relationships I created. Yeah. Yep. The life I have in skating is something I made. And then here comes Johnny come lately, all these years later. Hey bro, I got you. Bro. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And by the way, Johnny meant well. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He wasn't a jerk. Right. He really wanted to help. But at the same time, he's riding someone's coattails. There you go. You yeah. know? So it's, it doesn't work. Right. It doesn't work for me. It didn't work for me. I, and I, I, I was more so like, I've had a couple different people that were managers or agents, but mm-hmm. really, they were just good friendships. We talked on the phone a lot, you know, yeah. I, like some of those hours back, you know, but, but they were good people. They just, uh, you know, they had to get paid. Yeah. And so when somebody else has to get paid, then you, f- and you like that person, mm-hmm. then you find yourself doing things, giving in on behalf of that relationship right. Yeah. Yeah, right. sure. that aren't, you know, then it, it's like now it's a whole other thing that you have to. Yeah. It's hard enough. It's hard enough to stay employed as a pro skater. Now you have to employ other people. Right. You know, it's not month- to worry about there's a lawyer, there's an agent, there's a manager. They all get paid before you do. Right. Right. So, you know, yeah. and money is always a weird thing to talk about, too. Especially yeah, with your you friends. <clears throat> oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. It's crazy. But I mean, if you have an agent that like, obviously you're staying away from all my core skate stuff that I've already created, like you were saying, you've already developed all these relationships throughout the years. Anything, yeah. anything on the outskirts, like if you want to bring Slim Jim to the table, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's an extension that you're going to be of service to me. You know what I'm saying? Right. But all the other stuff that's internally that I've already created, like I'm good on that. But if you want to bring some extra shit, that's what we're talking about, you know? Hmm. But it's always like, yeah, I'm, yeah, but the extra stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's dealing with extra stuff. It? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. I don't know. Slim Jims are pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. And, uh, and then I've always, I always found it was like, well, hey, could you, why don't you call Tony Hawk and call in a favor? I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. Now you're using me for here we you're go. supposed to be doing this. Whoa. I'm calling Tony Hawk for a favor? Yeah. Unbelievable. Hey, man, if I'm at the point of my career where I have to call in favors, maybe I should just. <laughs> <laughs> Time to check out. Yeah, no, man. Listen, I'm, Johnny, you know, he tried. Okay. He meant well. He tried. The biggest thing, Chris, is I stuck around a little too long. I stuck around past my expiration date. I don't know? think so. Nah, no, think no. So. You have no, fans. In, in, a biz- in a business sense, man. In a business sense. the pe- No one s- – skaters, right. people out there, they don't, they don't see it that. They don't – they just – they like your skating, yeah. so they support you. Are you saying that, like, you know, because when a skater reaches a certain age, right? Like, there's always the new kids. They're, you know, you're on the company, you're on an element, you're on this, and th- those kids coming up will will kind of always take precedent. As you get older and older, it is harder to find some sponsors, you know, that will pay well that you could actually support your family and make a living. And you, maybe that's where the agent uh, Johnny came in, <laughs> Johnny. and Johnny come <laughs> lately, and then. Uh, 
you know, is that what you're saying though? Is like you, you, you stuck around too long in that sense of it. Like you, you try to further it by getting Johnny to come in. Yeah. Like Johnny, <laughs> Johnny, I love Johnny. Yeah. I want to, I want to meet this guy. I, I say Johnny come lately because none of these people, like, like none of these people were around like back in the day. You right. I mean? Yeah. It's like, exactly. I don't know you, bro. We didn't grow up together. You yeah, know? Um, absolutely. But, uh, but yeah. And, and what you're, the sense that you're putting is, is kind of what I'm getting at. It's mm. like, um, you know, and then I, like I had, I had uh, a, a band mm -hmm. and, and, I was trying to keep that going. I was trying to keep my skate career going and, you know, it costs money to keep things going. I have a family too. Yep. Um, you know, in 2009, you know, it was a pretty financial crisis, you know, which we all felt, sure. mm -hmm. um, I felt it really big time. It took about two years for me to really absorb what had happened, mm. but you know, I ended up, uh, losing my house, having my cars repossessed, you know, Jeez. just like Damn. real, that's real imagine, life, man. real life stuff. It is. Damn. It's real. Yeah. Life. And, and so, so then like, man, I'm just, just trying to tread water, you know, right. but, but that's what I'm saying is like treading water, you know, mm -hmm. it's not pretty to watch. I see what you're saying. And, 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 and to give some Johnny a little bit of credit, mm -hmm he's climbing the hill right and i'm rolling down it uh gotcha yeah, yeah. that's no intersection to have with anybody mm. you, know? you guys want to be both to, climbing he's trying to save me as i'm falling <laughs> off the mountain man <laughs> right know? right so all kinds of hokey stuff sure. can happen in that and and that's you know i don't really get in you know I would say there's things I regret and people would say, don't regret anything, Mike. <laughs> it's, all part of your, it's all part of your journey. <laughs> sure. Yeah. There's always regrets, man. Yeah. On, it's just God. like, it's that's life. what I mean. I just feel like I stuck around. I, I, I got you. I should have transitioned out of what I was doing sooner. Gotcha. I should have, I should have had enough faith in myself to start street plant sooner, but I was scared, man. Right. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I've been sponsored skaters since I was 16 years old. Mm. Yeah. Or 45. There's a little bit of wow. pride involved as well, I yeah. think. It's like starting your own thing too. And like, hopefully that it will be a success or it won't be a success. Yeah, there's no guarantee in any of that. But we're, we are seeing that more and more though. Tori Pudwill, like you're seeing all these like skaters really some, taking, taking that, that risk. Sometimes sure. people we'll start companies at the wrong time I mean, too. This is true. So maybe that happening made it, it was like perfect time for you to start the company. I know it goes back to like, oh, you know, um, mm -hmm. don't regret everything or anything. It's like that, <laughs> that that time though for you to start Street Plant was the time that like you, timing's everything. Ultimately, you're right, and and you know, I try my concept for Street Plant. I I really tried to get that started back in. 2002 with uh with giant distribution as work mm -hmm. i left uh black labels before i got on element uh, we tried to do a company with giant distribution and i pitched a lot of the same things that i'm talking about what street plan is and it just fell on deaf ears mm -hmm. and when we started street plant you know paul schmidt who i was working with back then is making my boards for street plant and i said dude he's like this is great this is great i was like dude i was telling you i want to do this stuff and he's like Mike, the market wasn't ready for it. Um, yeah. That's a, a pulled back perspective. Mm. You know, I was, I've always kind of been like now, 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 which has worked against me in, in some instances, you know, I'm much more, uh, uh, much more patient these days, especially since I moved to Des Moines. I did, yeah. <laughs> Patience is everything. And listen, <laughs> Professor Smith, he he's he's got his finger on the pulse. He knows what's going on and what's what what the market's ready for and what's not. You know, he's very uh, very knowledgeable. Yeah, he's been a really good friend. It's amazing, a uh, really good mentor, um, and someone that's really helped guide me as I started this second half of my life. Um, real, real grateful for Paul. I'm telling you this, you, you and Paul Schmidt, I, we, I, I can sit here for hours upon hours upon hours talking to them. I mean, it's you, you, you have uh, endless, endless information and stories and same with professor yeah. Schmidt, man, that guy is, oh, yeah. a, he, he's okay. another one that I hear all the time about his episode on the nine club. Like, Oh my yeah. God. Like, he was just here in Des Moines for a due tour. And, uh, 
there was like a, a an opening reception type of get together for for the people in the brands that were considered do tour partners. Mm-hmm. Um, Street Plant was part of that, and Professor Schmidt was a part of that with Create Escape, his program Create Escape, yes. which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I was at the, re- uh, so at the opening reception party, and I was sitting with my family and uh, a couple other people, and I started telling a story about how. Um, well, the conversation was about health insurance and um, we were talking about how like, you know, skaters don't have health insurance or traditionally never had health insurance and, and companies don't provide health insurance. Cause we were talking about how, like, if you were, uh, you know, getting into skating, you're like, mom, dad, I'm going to become a professional skater. And like, well, what are the, you get health insurance? What other benefits? Do you know, it's like, right. Yeah. 401k what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So we were talking about that. And then I said, well, you know, I got a funny story. Um, when Fury trucks started, I was one of the original riders on the Fury trucks team. And, uh, Lance mountain had called me up and he said, Hey, we want, you know, we're doing this thing, Fury trucks. It's, it's associated with flip the same guys who own flip on mm-hmm. this. And, uh, Jeff is going to do it and uh, myself and there was, I forget who else, but uh, we really want you to be a part of it. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know? yeah. I was just like, you, let's go back to what I was saying about like being a part of a team, like yes. camaraderie and being a part of something, especially one of those things that's put together to be elite or something, you know, mm-hmm. I was like, Whoa, man, I couldn't believe it. But, but the timing felt like, it felt like that's where I was going in my career at that time when I was on black label, it's just good things were happening for me. So that felt like, yeah, of course. Um, so I said, yes, I was mm-hmm. like, Lance mountain asked me to be on it. I'm, I'm on it. Yeah. A um, couple months later, like my boards hit with black label and black label exploded in giant distribution, their business went through the roof and, um, and they just saw that uh, they just saw how many boards I was selling. And they called me in one day and they said, look, um, you really should be riding Destructo trucks because Destructo was part of the giant family at the time. And I said, well, I'm on fury, man. You know, right. <laughs> and I think I was getting, I, I don't know. Do we, we, do we talk about money? A couple hundred okay? bucks. And what? I was getting 500 bucks from fury trucks, right? Sounds about I think right. something like Sounds that. Sounds about right for Which trucks. Yeah. Good, good money mm-hmm. for, for yeah. a truck. Good money. For you're truck you're lucky if you get paid from a truck company Hell these days. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I mean, Hey, Pro skaters, they're lucky to get paid anything. <laughs> this is In very, time, very true. We had a middle class of professional skaters. Right. You know? Now it's like, what, like five guys get paid and everyone else just suffers? It's damn true. But so anyway, I was getting paid like 500 bucks or something mm-hmm. like that. And it was good money. I was really happy for it. And so I sat down. It was uh, with Paul Schmidt and Steve Douglas and whoever else was involved at that time in Giants business. They said, we really got to get you on Destructo trucks and speed metal bearings. We just basically, they wanted me under one roof, you know, all of my product under one roof. And they're like, what's it going to take? And I was like, 800 bucks a month (laughs) and health insurance. Oh, there it is. There we go. They're like, wait a second. We're a truck company. Health insurance? I was like, figure it out, boy. <laughs> right. Wow. Right. Figure it out. You asked what so, it took. Yeah. <laughs> so they came through, man. They came through. Wow. I, got, I was getting paid 800 bucks to ride trucks and I had health insurance. Wow. And so I had to leave Fury. Okay. But as I was telling the story to the people I was sitting with, my family and a couple other folks, Professor Schmidt walked up. And he's like, hey. And I was like, I was just talking about you, man. Sit down. Amazing. <laughs> this is the guy that gave me health insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, that's unheard of yeah. in skating. I mean, they just don't do it. You very, know? very rarely. Very rare. And yeah. to throw that in your contract or what your requests are. For a truck un- company? Unheard of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did that kind of stuff all along. Whenever I had a whenever I had a little bit of leverage, <laughs> yes. I utilized it. Well, that's the thing. I, is that you, I think now you got to realize when you have that leverage. Totally. Right? Sometimes you just don't realize it, you know, and you're just being asked to ride for something or, you know what I mean? Like you're the confidence as well. Yeah. yeah. But I also going back to the other stuff I was talking about, mm. um, <laughs> trying to use leverage when you have none. <laughs> <This> is, <laughs> uh, we have some clips that we pulled that we want you to go over. Uh, we have a bunch of them here, but we'll probably get through the, uh, a fit. But I want you to come back. Literally, if you come back to L.A., Please, you got to come back and sit down with us and kick it for, you know, however yeah. long it takes. Cause I love, man, 
Well, like I was saying, like I, I was saying earlier, you know, I don't, I don't zoom, man. <laughs> I, I, need, <laughs> I need to be in the room with you guys. Dude. Um, I have refused. I've refused zoom meetings, zoom conferences. I won't do it. The only zoom conversations I have are with Kari Yuma. Yeah. Work on a pro model shoot with those guys. Nice. And that's, and, and then the, I owner the, uh, the owner of the company is such a sweetheart, man, Fernando. I mean, I, I actually enjoy interacting with him in this way because it's the only way I've gotten to interact with him sure. because my relationship with him started during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I won't do this. I mean, Nine Club and Karyuma. That's and it. That's, that's it. Awesome. Well, we feel, yes. I feel honored. But we do. Listen, there's nothing like sitting down with you in person. So I got to tell when you come back, I mean, we could spend, I, I mean. Uh, hey, when your every, when pro model comes out. No, if you're here for four days, yeah. you're going to be sitting here for three. Okay. So plan uh, out your time wisely. Well, you know, I, the last time I was on this time, I don't really want, you know, it's not about promoing stuff. No. Or, but, you know, but, but I am excited about this signature shoe. Now, and that's when it comes out. I'm coming out there. I'm coming on <laughs> the show with I'm the shoe. And I'm promoing it. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that is a good thing because you transitioned into it perfectly. Because before we got to the clips, I wanted to talk about that because uh, we have some Karyuma shoes here uh, on the set as well. Dude, and, um, I want to talk to you about that, how you got involved with the Karyuma. Um, the, the things that I love that they're doing is the sustainability uh, aspect of it. I have never seen a shoe box that is also a shipping box. They, uh, they, 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 you, they seal the box up with kind of like a, uh, you know, like those packagings, yeah. like this, uh, the, the FedEx envelopes. It's got so like when 3M you, tape on it. It's like mm -hmm. 3M tape. So when you, they put a label on it, when you get it, you, you pull the little zip cord and you open your shoes. Whoa. I've never seen that. Oh, so I love, and they plant a tree every time you buy shoes. They also have a program where- Don't they plant two trees? They maybe plant two trees. I like, think it's I something like that. I was like, what? One two? for each <laughs> foot. <maybe>. They also <laughs> have a program too, where you could actually buy one shoe. So if your left shoe is all is all fucked up, if you're a, a goofy footer or a regular footer, mm -hmm. you could buy a left shoe wow. and have it. Too. So the, I love the little things that they're doing. And was yeah. this is this kind of what drew you to them as well? I want to know what happened. You know, six years ago, I started Street Plant, and mm -hmm. I basically parted ways with the idea of sponsorship. Gotcha. I wasn't interested in it anymore, and I, it felt gross to me. Uh, I maintain a relationship with the helmet company I work with triple eight. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was a good thing, you know, but it, but there was no demands there. It wasn't like I had to do this, this, I didn't want to do photo shoots. I didn't want to, you know, I just wanted to do my skateboard company, but I knew that when I skated, I'd be wearing a helmet and I should, it'd be good to have a helmet relationship. People accuse me of, uh, I only wear a helmet cause I'm getting paid to wear a helmet. <laughs> Yeah, I may have been susceptible to that <laughs> in, those, in, those, in those desperate last breaths of my pro career. Mm -hmm. But when I started Street Punt, there's nothing desperate about it. Um, right. I put the helmet on because I wanted to put the helmet on. Mm -hmm. And I formed a relationship with a helmet company because I just thought, well, I'm going to wear a helmet. I hope that there's some, tr some you know, effect, some ripple effect of that. I didn't count on it, but I, I hoped for it. Mm -hmm. And if there was, then um, I would like that to be beneficial to this company that supports me. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. So I maintain the helmet relationship, but I really didn't. In other companies I work with, I just refuse to call them sponsorships because it just, I didn't want the baggage that comes with that, you know? Gotcha. So anyway, um, I discovered Karyuma on social media. Mm-hmm. I just saw their company and I was like, wow, this is really cool. Hmm. I had no idea. I think it's before they did anything in skate. I had no idea they had any interest in skate, but I thought this is a cool company. And, and, and I, I didn't buy anything, but I was definitely always thinking about like, you know, maybe I should buy some of these cause they look so cool. And this company seems so cool. So I was just a kind of a, a fan at a distance of the company. Gotcha. And I just liked what they were doing. I followed them from time to time and mm -hmm. I'd see their ads come up on social media sometimes. And I just thought this is a cool company. Gotcha. When they reached out to me, hmm. I just was, my mind was blown. Man. <laughs> yeah. How amazing. And, and you know, and they, they had started to assemble a team and it was all these really young, amazing skaters. And then they said they wanted me to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And I was just really moved by that because 
Um, I just, there, I, for so long, I, I, I was hoping that one of these other big skate shoe companies would come knocking on my door and they never did. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand why they didn't. I, I felt like I had something to offer them, but sure. And now I'm so glad they ne- they never did hmm. because I feel like I'm with a company that represents something new and fresh um, and is the future of skateboarding. You know, um, I just, it's just, it's kind of overwhelming to me to at this late date, have this kind of um, love shown to me from a company and appreciation for what, what I do and right. what I've done and what I stand for. Um, it's really, really meaningful. I love that. Yeah. They, they seem cool. I've actually spoken with um, the owner as well. Fernando. Fernando. Yeah. Super yeah. cool dude. Yeah. Um, it's, and it's he's just loves, he loves you know? skateboarding. Like he grew up yeah. skateboarding and then he went into some other stuff and you're right. Uh, yeah. Kariuma was a, a brand in Brazil mm-hmm. and they weren't in skate and then they got into skate and, getting you on the team and all this stuff. And then again, with this this sustainability, the way that they want to, you know, um, you know, uh, develop their, their company sustainability, I think is, is, is we need more of that. in skating. They want to help the world and we need more of that. Yeah. 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 Well, the shoe that I'm working on, my, my signature shoe is hundred percent vegan. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it has, uh, the materials are natural and recycled. So there's recycled materials in the shoe. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you can recycle materials and use them, man, that's, that's a step in the right direction. Totally. And they perform if they perform well too. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and, I mean, that's the thing too, is, I mean, we're talking about high performance footwear. It's not, you know, it's not flimsy stuff. Sure. Footwear for skateboarding, you know? Right. You know, so, I got these on right now. Yep. Oh, by the way, I, I didn't put the shoes on to promo them. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, you don't wear shoes in my house. Right. But I, I couldn't imagine sitting here without shoes on. <laughs> 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 like, like it'd be like, you know, naked below the shirt. Yeah, yeah, kinda, yeah. I mean, the way that we have it set up here, it's almost like you are sitting here. So it would be a little weird if you were yeah. just wearing. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. But anyway, I mean, I skate in these shoes. Right. And I love them. And, uh, and I'm really excited about, you know, my <laughs> having a shoe at 51, bro. I Come love on. it, dude. Where's that my applause? Awesome. Amazing. Button, right? <laughs> That's amazing. Congrats. How, now, w- when do we expect this to come out? Um, I think it's going to hit in September and there'll initially be five different colorways. Amazing. Ooh, bro. Wow. Right out the gate, right out the gate. I, I love, love that. It. Well, they don't have too many... T- not too many styles out right now, correct? It's only like one or two, or just just one. The Kativa Pro, um, in uh, in uh, what's well, uh, there's a high top, and then what's the other thing called? Low top. <laughs> well, yeah. it's just regular. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Quarter top. I, I was actually surprised because when I went on their website, I was looking around. They have a great low top shoe that's very, um, you know, kind of non-discreet. It's it's very. It looks really good to skate in, and I, I was surprised that they didn't just kind of put that in the line as well. I'm sure you know the shoe I'm talking about too. It was like. Yeah, but I think, you know, when it comes to, to skateboarding, it's got to be performance. You yeah. know? I mean, so, that's true. Yeah. I just saw- look good, but then it's just garbage. Fall apart. It's not garbage. Right. It's not garbage. To but skateboard it's, to in, skateboard it's, in, not, it's not, it's not held up. Yeah, for garbage that. is the wrong it's word. It's not built no, for skateboarding. You, know, you could go ride a, a, you know, a van slip on, but you know what you're getting. Right. Um, I think it would be kind of, for, for a brand like Kariuma to put a shoe in with their skate shoes that wasn't actually developed for skating could be a, a misstep, a uh, misdirection. I got you. Where someone could buy that shoe and be like, this is crap or something. I it wasn't intended right. to. You no, know, the Katiba Pro is intended to be skated. I got you. I understand. I just saw that shoe and I'm like, oh, that looks like a great shoe. Yeah. Man, I would probably sk- I would skate in that shoe. You know, it's a good All shoe. All their but- stuff looks great, but... You skate skateboard wise, the Katiba is the way to go until, of course, the Valley. The, the, the yeah. Valley, the Valley one, you know, because let's not let's let's put a number on these, bro, because we could go mm-hmm. for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. ten. My first shoe from Etnies was really great. My second, my third were junk. The first one went off, dude. Everyone wore those and were that. Well, listen, if you're coming out with what'd you say, five different colorways? Yeah, dude, that's can you incredible. give us a uh, little details of like what the inspiration of your shoe is? Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of built off of um, 
you know, the, the profile that like the Katiba pro has, which is kind of a modern skate profile, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but the big inspiration for me is, you know, I, I always skated. My favorite shoes were like the big basketball shoes, especially back in the day, yeah. you know, like, uh, the Jordans or, uh, uh, I skated Dr. J's, um, even the airwalks that I, that I wore, they were kind of like big high top type shoes, you know, mm -hmm. but what I always loved about the, the basketball shoe is when you looked down at it, it just had a, it's just so stylized, it had a, this kind of flavor to it. So I wanted to go with a, uh, like the modern profile for the shoe. So from the side profile, it looks like every other skate shoe really, I guess. I mean, it's hard, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel. Right. Um, but when you look down at it, it's got that like old school basketball feel. Oh, okay. It's just a, it's just a play with the, um, the materials, the textures and, uh, you know, I forget what they're called, the little dots in the in the toe. You know yeah, I mean? the little holes. It's like a little venting. I like guess. a breathing hole. Yeah. Breathing holes, yeah. There's an actual like tech word for those. I, I always hear all the, yeah, you hear like the vamp and like the whatever. Does any yeah. yeah. you have a good vamp? Vamp. Vamp. I always hear vamp. I don't know. Really? I don't man, I'm, I'm too old for that. <laughs> well, that, that. That's incredible, man. I'm stoked that you're stoked, you know, on this new the Karyuma and uh, the new pro model. What'd you say? September? September. Yeah. But even, even the, um, I've gotten to uh, interact with the team quite a bit. Mm. And that thing that I was talking about earlier about like wanting to be a part of the team and be a part of a, a especially an elite group of skaters or something. Yeah. It's, I, I have it. That's First amazing. time in my whole career. I love that. These guys, yeah. And these guys are young and they're all amazing skaters and they've been so good to me man so, just so just welcoming and appreciative and you know i feel like i mean i feel like a, a dad sometimes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well you are a dad this is true <laughs> yeah. you know i feel like I, I i feel like i've always had um something to offer my teammates mm -hmm. and people i skated with from you know just a, a mentorship type of role you know i've been doing this a long time and but, i love that bro but you know like like i was talking about with the element team i wouldn't say that they didn't appreciate me or anything mm -hmm. but a lot of times it was lost on young careers and um and you know i tried to unify things and it didn't work and so i got a couple of dumb tattoos <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and but, but but that's where always where i felt i had value you know yeah and um just never really clicked and this is the first time in my entire skate career where I, where I get to hang with younger skaters and and it's totally clicking and I totally feel like in my element and I don't you know I mean I'm I'm shy these days about you know my skating and stuff I don't you know I these guys are all so good I just um but they don't they're just like dude we're just stoked you're part I of it. I love yeah. that, bro. Yeah, I mean, you, they, they are. Yeah. Le, uh, Le, uh, Leandre? Leandre Sanders, Leandre man. Sanders. I mean, the no. guy, is he goofy or regular, Mike? You tell us. Uh, he's Leandre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But yeah, you guys got a good squad, and I, I'm, I'm stoked for you, man. That That's, yeah, dude, dude, that's amazing, bro. So we could count on you coming back in here in around September-ish? I would love to come on bro. and bring this year. Yeah, let's bro. do it. That'd be dope. I don't want to. Okay, we can't blow our load here tonight, then, because we have. I got a <laughs> no, lot. To, we can't. <laughs> no, bro. Listen, we got. We got clips, dude. I, clips we got clips to show. We got. But listen, I, I just love. I even when Raj and I we went to the we went to um, the, the your garage and yeah. uh, you were man this the stories that you would tell. I are so enthralling, you know, and cause you have a story about, remember you pulled out the whole, the book and you had like, like, um, sheets of contest stuff and like tour just, flyers and stuff like tour that. Tour mm -hmm. Like it's just incredible. Historian. The historian. That's what I'm saying. Like whoever's not listening to you, man, mm -hmm. and absorbing that, like yeah. you is such a vast, I don't know. Listen, I mean, back you got, you then got, young uh, kids didn't really know what they were getting into. I don't know. Yeah. You know? When I see, like, dude, the longevity. We're going to talk about longevity. Mike Vallely. Yeah. I finally said your name right there you for go. once. There but, you dude, go. you've been in the game for so long. And respect, like, seriously, thank you. Like, for real. That's really, really cool, man. Because a lot of people have done what you've done. It's hard to, it's hard to um, 
to blame a young skater coming up, you know, like uh, you, you're supposed to try to kill your heroes or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to get out of the way, you know, um, you know, in the mid nineties, I was considered washed up or whatever, you know, over the hill. And, uh, and my attitude was, okay, well, there's another hill to climb right in front of me. Oh. <laughs> I may have gone over that hill, but I love it, man. Another hill and, and, um, and as difficult as it can be when, when uh, you're, I mean, dude, I've been the old guy since like 1991, <laughs> you know, really, I mean, I have in street skating, you know, yeah, vert right. is different. That's a different thing, but in street skating, it's just turned over so fast, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so I've always, I've always heard about like, uh, you know, how I'm old and in the way, but I always knew that I had something to offer all along, all along. Sure. Uh, and, and I can't really like, you know, I don't hold a grudge or can't be upset with the young skater coming up, man. They're just trying to, they're just trying to do what I did. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. yep. they're just trying to pave their own way. And, uh, and it could be annoying if some guy, you know, you're advancing tricks and you're progressing and some dude is doing bonuses and hand plans. I love it, bro. I'd get out of your yeah. way, bro. I'd be like, woo. Yeah. I get it. You know, I'm no. not like. Listen, Kerry Yuma. Congrats on that, dude. We want yeah. to, I, 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 I'm just stoked because you get to come back in here. Yeah. Cause I, I, I don't know if two hours is enough. We, we need to, yeah. we need to sit down for, for another five, at least, you know, cause that's what I was saying with the garage, you know, we, we were in the garage and you were t pulling out these contests. I mean, just the knowledge is so like, I love to learn, you know, I wasn't around those days. I'm not a big skate historian. I'm learning yeah. doing this show. I'm learning talking to these people and Lance Mountain, a you, a Caballero. Like I never got to experience <laughs> that, you know? So hearing it firsthand is a beautiful thing, man. I totally. love it, bro. Never stop telling stories. I love it. <laughs> I love it, man. But well, listen, we do have some clips here we want to play because we, uh, we, we got a lot, but we'll get through a, a few of them. The first one isn't really a clip. But we thought it'd be interesting because uh, I, I want to know the backstory to this. You uh, you, oh, sp you spray painted Paul Blart, <laughs> Mall Cop. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> How? So, what is going on? So when uh, when we worked on this movie, the the Mall Cop movie. Yeah. Kevin James is really really tuned in to. Uh, he was just totally tuned in to, to skating and to who I was at that time. And, um, he knew that I had this reputation for security guard confrontation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So he thought it'd be funny in advance of the movie to have this fake confrontation. Right. Um, so we just came up with this thing, but, um, but when this video actually hit the internet, um, people didn't realize it was a skit. <laughs> Wow. They didn't recognize Kevin James. They thought I was really doing this to some poor dude. Right. Wow. <laughs> How can they not recognize him? I know, him? look at this guy. <laughs> I don't know, but man, I got people really angry at me. Really? And, you know, here's the thing is like in this skit and like Viva La Bam or CKY mm -hmm. stuff that I did. Sure. Uh, I'm playing like a character of myself. Like I've actually never... I would never do that to somebody. No, yeah. you would never yeah, do that. Some of that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but you wouldn't take it this far as in, but look, you're la I mean, dude, he is a oh. funny, funny guy, by the way. Dude, for He's sure. Best, man. That, that was, it was so fun working on that movie. And that day was so fun, you know? Man. <laughs> I, I, I love that he was in tune with it and he wanted to do this. He thought it would be funny. Yeah. That, well, that's incredible. Even on like King of Queens, like he'll wear like, I've seen him wearing S t-shirts and like skate company t-shirts on the show. I'm mm -hmm. like, he has to be wanting to do that, right? Sure. Hey, real quick. I know, I, man, I know it's just tangents, but um, when we were working on the movie, uh, I, I was, I, I, the movie was filmed in Boston and I was there for the entire production. It was like two months or something. Oh, wow. um, just because the way they scheduled my scenes it was, I had to be there for the entire production. So, uh -huh. um, but there was a lot of time that I didn't work like week, a week would go by and I wouldn't be on set. Mm. And, uh, but at one point 
um, Kevin just began to trust my eye for things and my sense of things. And there's one day I was like, I was jogging on the Charles river and I got back to my hotel room and my phone had, was blowing up and it was production. Where are you? Why aren't you answering? We need you on set. Production has completely stopped. We're waiting for you. And I was like, I'm not even working today. So I call, I call in and they're like, you have to get down here. Kevin needs you. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I get there and there's a scene in the movie. Can you guys turn the, the thing off of the video? Yeah, that's yeah. Raj. Yeah, yeah. Turn the, you don't need to keep playing yeah. it. It says, I can't, I, I haven't watched that since it came out. And I just can't watch the old stuff. <laughs> but, um, but uh, I, I get there and there's a scene in the movie where, uh, where he, he's on the Segway and he crashes through a, uh, a glass window, right? Okay. So, um, so that's the scene they're shooting. I get there and Kevin's like, you know, you could, I, as I'm walking up, I see the producers and people are just stressed out waiting for me. I come walking up and Kevin goes, oh, 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 Mike's here. The X Games expert's here. That's what he kept calling me, X Games expert. X Games expert. And he's like, okay, Mike V, if I crash through this window on my Segway and I come smashing through it, how's my body going to land on the floor? Okay. And I was like, uh. <laughs> so I just go, okay, probably something like this. And I get on the floor and I like, lay out on the floor. <laughs> yeah. and he's like, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Mike V knows what's up. I told you guys, I know what's up. He knows what's up. I knew he knew what was up. And I was just like, what the hell? So I just became like a, a, a consultant on anything physical. <laughs> right. Like he just trusted my, I mean, anyone could have said you'll land like this and it could have, would have been the same thing, but he just Amazing. like, Amazing. he just needed me to like, you know, because he, because he, but the reason that I, I bring it up mm -hmm. is because he actually valued the skaters and the BMX guys that were working on the movie. There you go. That's right? awesome. Yeah. He really like, and he just said, these guys are legit. They do this stuff for real. So they know what's up. Right. So he just trusted, you know, what our experience is. Or, totally. You know, he probably had family. a, he probably had a conversation with the director or whatever. And the director probably wanted him to land a certain way. And he probably yeah. was like, no, that's not, I, uh, let's get the X Games expert in here, bro. Because yeah. we gotta X Games out. Mike, dude. X gotta get him in. Mike. Go over this. Let's go over this. I love that yeah, though. I skated in a few X Games. Yeah. Paul Paul Blart, the mall cop. That's amazing, dude. It was dude. fun, man. I it was love fun. That. And he and he was a sweetheart to everybody. I mean, you you know, I'm sure anyone that's ever worked with him just says he's the best guy and they're not lying. He seems like the best guy. You watch him on screen and you get good vibes from him. Yeah. You yeah. know, my mom my mom's a huge fan actually of uh King of Queens. Oh, yeah. She that's loves a good that show. show. That's she a great show. That show. She'd be that's like, oh, I'm watching King of Queens right now. Uh, whatever the guy's name is in the show. Um, I'd be like, oh, she'll start telling me what he's doing in the show. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, I don't watch. Oh, but him and, and him and the other guy, they're at the, the donut shop. And the... I'm Dude, like, mom, I don't Isn't uh, Costanza's dad in there? Yeah. Um, or not Costanza's dad. Uh, uh, Stiller. Stiller's dad. Yeah. He'd be awesome to have in the show, Kevin James. Can you hook it up? Can you yeah. do us a favor, Mike? Yeah, can you do us a favor? Yeah, I need a little favor. <laughs> Get Kevin James on the show. It's been a long time. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure he'll val he'll still he still values you, bro. Yeah. Um, a hey, going into now listen, I know we we you know, uh the fighting stuff and what that that's whatever, right? We we're all we're all past that point. But this You're one not gonna show a fight video. No, 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 no. But I think this is rad because uh when Muska got into the security fight, you know, and I, I, I hope we could talk about this one because I think it's important, you know, I mean, here you guys were at a demo oh, and yeah. Muska flew off the ramp and then here you, you came in and were, you, you, you kind of like, um, <laughs> stopped every, you know, you, 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 you had Muska's back. Yeah. You know, Oh my I've God. had this same thing has played out 10, 10 other times. This wasn't on video. Right, right. Yeah. Wait, why? Uh, why did? Why initially did they did they stop Muska right? Or why were they tripping on well, Muska? Just look. Just think about it this way, Kelly. You were just here in Des Moines for due tour. Mm -hmm. Could you even imagine something like this happening? It's crazy. I mean, that would be insane. No, it wouldn't. Yeah. It wouldn't happen. Yeah. Because skating's respected now. Mm -hmm. Skaters are respected. The professional skaters that are competing in the competition 
are known and beloved. Right. They're athletes. Um, in my time, that wasn't the case. In Muska's time, that wasn't the case. We were known and beloved in skateboarding, maybe, but not out in the world. And our events took place out in the world at malls and other places, right. uh, hard rock cafes. And security guards, um, they thought that they could come onto our street course or our demo setup or whatever and manhandle us. <laughs> right. <laughs> come on, man. You don't go in the lion's den and mess with the lions. It's crazy. You know? I mean, just the thought of it is crazy. You have this whole thing set up for skateboarding. And here they are, like, totally harassing the skateboarder in a controlled environment. It, it, it happened for years and years. and years. I, You know, if I, I walk up to the tour or I go to the X Games or I go to some big skate event, do you know what happens when I see a security guard? They're like, no way. What's up, Mike V? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Right. right back then they didn't know our names they didn't care to know our names right they didn't like us they didn't like skateboarding and the second they thought they had some room to use whatever authority they were given that day mm-hmm. they they did and then my attitude about it was uh well what makes you what gives you the right to put your hands on one of our guys what if i put my hands on you then right. what right right you know um which maybe sounds like stupid tough guy talk no but- I don't, I, I think it's, I think it's really admirable, man, that you came to the Muska's kind of, cause they had like Muska was, you know, they had him, you know, and you weren't going to yeah. stand for that. What Muska did, he said the F word. Really? Oh. So you got a guy's arms behind his back. Right. Like you're going to arrest him or cart him off because you don't like what he said. That's just crazy. And, uh, you know, that's the wild west though, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Back then, yeah. You know, you you mentioned that about like security guards, like how they respect you and everything. Like I remember I was out skating and a cop was like, Oh yeah, I grew up with Christian Soy, dude. Well, like keep skating, dude, keep doing your thing. You're like, I'm like, what? Dude, this yeah, is, what is so going on here. <laughs> it's, it's just it's cool, man. Um, listen, I got this clip here. The, this is uh I love this the, the Brooklyn Banks. This mm. is from uh, Rubbish Heap. So sick. Yeah. Um there you are. How was it skating there? Autographs? How was it skating there back in the day? Look, I never got to even skate it like yeah, uh, like no, that, neither. like that at least. Um, I kind of I, I say in a way I kind of grew up skating there. You know, um, I started skating there probably in '85. Mm. Definitely '86. I was skating there all the time. Um, that was that's my favorite place in the world that I've ever skated. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I, yeah, I, it's there's something about it, you know. It wasn't it wasn't built for skating, but it's like the it was like a skate park. <laughs> it's like the ultimate, yeah. Something about those bricks, the way they felt and the sound they made, it's just that's my favorite sound. <laughs> it's the coolest looking spot almost ever. It looks like, or really to me is. at least. And I have, you know, I have like um, I skated there in public domain. And in my public domain video part is my skate mentor, Rodney Smith, is in the video mm. with me, which may be the first time someone had their friend in their video part with them. You know, it's like really common in videos, but sure. I think that was the first time. It's like he wasn't on Pal Peralta. He wasn't sponsored, but he was my friend and he was my he was so important in my life and my career. I, I said, he's got to be in the video. Amazing. Amazing. With me. So and good. they put him in the video, you know. I mean, that probably made his life too, you know, being in the Powell Peralta video. Well, it, I mean, he, you know, this is Rodney Smith. He started Shot Skateboard, Zoo York. I mean, he's, he's a big part of East Coast skateboarding and skateboarding yes. as a whole. But, but back then, uh, not just me, but so many people from the East Coast will, you know, he's a part of their lives. Sure. But um, yeah, I mean, him being, him being in public domain, it's more about like we were in it together. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like he played such a big role in my, especially my early career. I love know? that. That's so cool. Man. That, but, but I, I, mean, my, I have such a history there beyond, you know, public domain. There's the footage that's in rubbish, rubbish heap. Mm-hmm. I skated there a lot in the early nineties. I saw the whole next generation of New York and East coast skaters come up at that spot. Just when, when they really started getting super tech over the wall, 
I couldn't believe it. You know, I got to see all that. Um, and then of course, in, you know, the end of 98, I went and ollied over that fence. Yep. Mm. Yep. Didn't you knock the thing off the fence? Well, I did. I, the first time was by accident and then Reddit told me to do it again on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so by accident, you knocked the little, it's uh, on the yeah. fence. It's a little, uh, ball thing that, the uh, whatever. Yeah. So before, before I landed it, I had clipped that ball cap thing and it flew off. Gotcha. And, uh, Read a read a thought like that's so cool. He's the one who shot the sequence. Um, he's like, you got to do that, man. You got to knock it off, you know. So I grabbed like I kind of grabbed like front side or indie and kind of bone it out a little bit so so that I could hit it. Yes, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, did you the first time did you hit it with your with your truck, your front truck, or your back truck, or your tail? Or uh, how- I don't remember the first time I tried to go over the fence, I almost killed myself. Oh. Um, it must have been scary. Yeah, it was really, a, really a terrifying Sketchy. situation because if you look, you can kind of see on this video how far away the actual wall is Absolutely. from the, yeah. the takeoff point of the bank. Right. Because the bank's round it. So you have to ollie so far away. Um, and then the fence was, you know, pretty high. Yeah. Uh, there's no way you can't pose it. You can't like that. Well, that's not a good, that's not a good, you want to go when yeah, because he kind of like goes to, he's kind of t- pops off the round part. Yeah. That bump shoots you like straight up and down. It doesn't like, yeah. you have to go really fast in order to get some distance out of it. Yeah. So you can't, you can't pose, you can't like do a, 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 a you know, a, you can't pose it. You can't just skate at it and just fly out because you're going to crash right into the fence. Right. So if you're going to go for it, you got to absolutely go for it. Mm-hmm. So my first real attempt, I went so fast. <laughs> And when I went to Ollie, I ollied it like a little too late and I missed the the, the sweet spot and I just kind of airballed. Gosh, oh, yeah. I just flew up in the air oh. and the, the spikes of the fence were like under my, my <laughs> head. Oh, my I, had, I had to like do a front flip over the fence. Wow. And I just like landed on my back, like nesty plunged the ground. Oh my um, God. That was the first right, attempt. <clears throat> Yeah. And so, so everyone that was there was just like, Oh my God. And I just, I got so freaked out. I went home. Uh, well, I went to my parents' house in New Jersey. I got on a train and went right to my parents' house. And then I stayed there for two days and had nightmares about it. <laughs> it was that bad. Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, th- they built the fence to stop people from skating. That's how big the fence was. It was not meant to be ollie over. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so, I, but then I just kind of visualized it and I said, I, I know I can do it. So I called Retta back. I was like, meet me at the banks today. I'm doing it. And I went there and, uh, and the first go, I got a good pop and I just, you know, I still, my board got left behind, but I got over it. No problem. Amazing. And I, there was no looking back then. I just kept going until I made it. But one of those early attempts, I hit that ball and it flew off. Gotcha. Mm. I love that Retta had the sense in like, you know, putting it that back on and recreating it almost, you know, cause it did happen. So yeah. iconic dude. Iconic. Uh, I think Retta was uh, a big, you know, the relationship you have with the photographer yeah. and uh, your video guy is like so important. Oh my God. Um, he was so encouraging and he was just like, and, and he, you know, his attitude about it was, is like, you got to do it. He calls, you know, he calls me V. You got to do it, V. Yeah. You got to do it. You got to be the one that does it, V. You know? You know? And, uh, and I mean, I, that's how I felt about it. I was like, this is the spot I grew up at. If anyone's going to ollie this thing, it's going to be me. Right. But easier said than done. <laughs> I mean, you did it though. Yep. You did it. It took uh, two days and a nightmare, but and there you go. Man. Right away, such a good cheerleader and, you know, he was a big part of me doing it. I mean, him being there with that camera and yeah. it's encouraging. You need that. You know, you need that encouragement for sure. Uh, okay, here we go. We got this one here. I, I like this one, dude. This is an air walk. Dude, that is gnarly, that is gnarly dude. dude. Yeah. Down 12 stairs. Yeah, I think that may be, um, I don't know. I just wanted to take my tricks as big as I could take them, you know, mm-hmm. oh, airwalk, amazing, you know, airwalk's a Rodney Mullen trick, you know, but, yeah. um, I was one of the first street skaters to do it on, a, on a big board, you know? Gotcha. Yes. And you know, kids today, they're like, Oh, is that like a cruiser board? I'm like, well, 
<laughs> well, um, the tricks that you do were invented on cruiser boards, I guess. Pretty <laughs> much, right. Um, but yeah, the first time I met Rodney Mullen, I, I, I showed him an air walk and he just couldn't believe it. He was, I was the first street skater ever, he ever saw do it. Because I, I told him, I can do your tricks. And I, I showed him. He's just, <laughs> so sick. So wow. So then, air but, walk has always been a trick I loved and a go-to trick for me. So when we were filming that video. I was, or yeah, we were filming for that. I just was looking for, actually, I think that we filmed it, but it was a photo in, in Transworld. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, it's, man, iconic, dude. Just I always trip out how down. you would. Like you probably bailed on that once or twice or a couple of times. You just grab your, you grab it and throw it away. If you bail, how does that work? I just can't imagine his hands being involved. In no, I can't no. dude. I've never, I don't. I mean, listen, you're already holding the board. So if something, if you don't feel right, you're throwing it, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I mean, think about it from the very beginnings of skating for me, I was, my hands were always involved. So it's not something I would consciously think about. It's like, you just get the board away from you. Gotcha. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Right. Throw it away. Like, what's the technique if you're doing an air walk and you bail? <laughs> well, you know, Hey, that's how I learned like doing flip tricks down stuff. I discovered how to like catch the board, like switch flip down the stairs. You, you catch it and you learn how to bail, throw it away. You yeah. learn how to throw it away. And it's like, I didn't know if you had a process of that, like, but you kind of just go, it was, you go it for was it. It all worked out at some point, but you know, you, it's not stuff you think about. Yeah. You just, you, learn to do it you yeah know? yeah the process is just go for it <laughs> yeah sure. <laughs> sure i couldn't imagine trying that i think my brain would get tangled trying to get kick my feet out those i've never tried it dude that'd be like that and like benny hanas i know jerron's really good at those you missed the eras bro I mean, yeah. there's different eras to this. <laughs> you, missed, you missed that one you know? this seems tough man that looks like i'm looking at i'm watching that air walk it's such a heavy landing man it looks painful that thing's big it's dude big 12 yeah. stairs yeah. Mike. yeah but i you know i just always there's never that i never had that light touch it's not i don't have that light landing thing it's just like i come down like a ton of no bricks. but you know what though like i I listen, I look at somebody like Mike Mo, right? He does not have a light landing. He stomps that thing. He land, he Mike Mo lands hard, you know? So I don't think it's I mean, I, I, I like it, bro. I think it's just style. Yeah. The first time I met um the first time I met Ray Barbie, um, I think it was at this contest at the Velodrome. I I was aware of him. Mm -hmm. He'd just gotten on the Pal Peralta team and you know, it was like already here they come, man. They're just <laughs> my career was in jeopardy from the start. <laughs> and uh, the first time I met him, uh, I said uh, we were talking about tricks, and I was like, "Yeah, man, I got I, I." As far as I know, I mean, it's like you start talking about who did what first. It's, mm -hmm. You know, who knows really? So many sure. rad people doing rad things all at the same time, but I. As far as I knew at the time, I was the only person or the first person to do a kickflip into a water ride. Mm. And I told him, I was like, yeah, we were talking about tricks. I was like, I'll kickflip water ride. And I started trying to do it to show him. And, he, and he's like, oh, yeah, I, I, I can do that. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he rode up and he did it. And it was so smooth. And I did it too, but it was so like barbaric <laughs> you know it's like my hand smacked the wall the board hit hard i just pushed it down and rode away and he's just like Bleep. wow you know? yeah like, wow. it's different oh, styles man. though imagine yeah. if you were your whole career you were just this finesse skater you know uh, just yeah, finesse I, I, I mean hey i'm i like my style of i skating. love your style yeah. bro yeah. Yeah. I, I pursued that style That's, i mean maybe I, some of it is just whatever but i that's what i chose to to do and the way i skated was real to me absolutely but i was in awe of ray you know i was just in total awe he just had this it's beautiful to watch yeah man, you know yeah two up it's like opposites right it's like uh man, ray barbie Dude, i couldn't imagine how cool that would be to meet someone and like all you do is talk, talk about new tricks because that was what's coming out around back then nowadays when kids meet each other, they're not talking about new tricks. Because all the tricks have been done, basically. Oh man! So, Kelly, <laughs> Kelly, I, I'm so, so grateful for the time I grew up skating. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. so cool, dude. Like, and I was right there for all. I do. I saw the first. I saw the first handrails. <laughs> you know, there. Yeah. I saw the first. I saw Mark Gonzalez fifty fifty 
the first 50 50 on a hand row. I was there. He made me do it after he did it. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> The first time he 50 50 the handrail, he over, he like went over, like, you know, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The truck slipped yeah. over. Yeah. And, and um, I had already done that on, on other rails, not going downstairs, but I had already like, oh, like gone to 50 50 a, 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 a rail and gone over it. And I was just, I couldn't imagine doing that over stairs. You know, I was terrified. So he 50 50s this rail in New York City. He came to New York City, scouted out all these different rails, found the one he thought would be perfect to 50-50. He does it. First time ever done. I don't think there was a camera there. You know? <laughs> it's just like, you guys there? He's so crazy. Me, Felix Arguez, Coco Santiago, a bunch of other New York, New Jersey skaters, whoever was invited to hang. Um, so he 50-50s the rail. And then he says, you got to do it, Mike. You got to do it. You got to be the second person that's ever 50-50 the hand rail. <laughs> Like a real, maybe this had already happened at a contest, but like a real handrail in the streets. Yeah. Know? And uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. But I kept coming up to the rail. I'd come, I'd come at the side and be visualizing getting on it. And I kept seeing, because his first attempt, he over, he, dude, he ate it, man. I was like, I don't want to fall like that. I don't want to fall like that. Right. So when I really decided I was going to do it, I came from behind the rail and I ollied over the back of the rail. Oh, wow. You're the I ollied so high. Like, I was just like, brr, I took off. Like, brr. I like landed on top of it and I grinded down the rail. Wow. And um, I mean, I never did that after that. But you it know? makes sense of why you would do that because you're going straight. You're not having yeah. this angle where you could flip. Wait, right? dude. But, but the rail, the, the back of the rail was really higher than any of us could ollie at that time. But yeah, but whenever you're going over something, it, you're, you're going to, you Wait, know, dude, you're going to get over it. You're right? telling me that the first time I 50-50 was on the rail, Mark Gonzalez did like, it was a front side 50-50 on it. Is that what you're saying? And then you went and after it, it straight on 50-50. Cause that like, that is way gnarlier, dude. Yeah, and remember guys we did this on cruiser boards <laughs> <laughs> but that that's so awesome to hear because that's like that that kind of later on that kind of became a trend in skateboarding is going the straight oh, on yeah. 50-50s and like then Abe took it to another level doing right. switch 5 O's and stuff yeah, like right. that I didn't do it to put a variation on the trick I was just scared you were scared. no but that makes sense though you're going straight over you're not going to slip off you're going to be right centered over it correct right yeah, yeah. And then when I tried to do it the second time, I locked up. So, uh, <laughs> wait how how many stairs was this? I was pro. It's like only like like maybe four. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say four or five. Yeah. Now, what do they say? A big five. It's <laughs> huge. No, huge, huge. Five. That's so cool, man. That's Isn't that seriously, incredible. That's awesome. But I mean, I mean, I could tell you so many more stories like that. That's you know, why you're like, coming back. That's the or, essence or, of pushing or, each or, other, though, too. That's like the essence of pushing each other. You know, mm -hmm. he's like, just try it with me. You know, like, let's do this together, you know? Yeah. And he did oh, it his it was. way, and you did it your way, so. No, it was. Yeah. Um, Nottis Coppice, Mark Gonzalez, myself, um, Julian Stranger skated with us a lot back then. Yes. Uh, I mean, it was, every day was exploration, you know? We were what's possible what's possible Isn't that that's cool? what led that's what led to the barnyard board was the boards we were skating were directional they had a nose and a tail you, but our skating became you know didn't have a direction we were going both ways hmm. um i may have said this on the on my nine club mm -hmm. appearance but at one point i drilled the nose of my board back yeah. stacy crawled to pick my board up and he's like what are you doing? And I was like, I need a bigger nose, man. Like, I ollie off the nose. <laughs> you know? He's like, you what? That's so cool. That's great. I mean, imagine be, dude, just to, like you said, to go around and skate and wonder what's possible and what's not. Yeah. It's like, is mind blowing yeah. to me. I, when yeah. I was on last time, do you guys remember if I talked about the um, contest in Arizona? Is that the, uh, contest with which which one are you referring to i spent a week in arizona with jason lee and mark gonzalez and they were looking for you no that was a different one lance mountain uh, was looking for you yeah no we we, we spent a there was an amateur contest one weekend and a pro contest the next weekend okay phoenix and this was like uh i guess this would be like the autumn of 88 
Um, so we got there. We we went to the amateur contest, and we spectated it, and we stayed in Arizona that week, and we stayed until the pro contest, mm -hmm. and then we stayed at that. And that week, we would sleep all day. We stayed at this embassy suites. We'd sleep all day, and in the evenings, we'd get up, eat something, and then we would skate all night till the sun came up. Me, Mark, and Jason. And what we were doing was absolutely exploring possibilities. Crazy. Stuff hadn't been done yet. It hadn't been done. Were you guys we were filming too, or just, just you three and that's it? We had friends with, we had a couple other friends mm -hmm. um, that weren't, you know, pros. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, they're just, you know, it was just, uh, it was this really special, special time. Fuck yes. um, and wow. something I always, think back to, I mean, if I ever, whenever I'm in Phoenix, I always think about it. Um, but I always think about like just that kind of, that kind of skating when it was, it was still uncharted, you know, discovering what I was on tour with Jason Lee in 1989. And we, we did demos every day. And then every night we get to the hotel and we'd skate all night, me and him in the parking lot. And the manual tricks and the combinations that he was coming up with, mm -hmm. you know, flip in. Yeah. Now it's flip in, flip out and 10 things in between. Sure. Yeah. But just flip in, man. Like, yeah, this dude. was, I was, I saw it all advance. Crazy. You know? And, and, and some, sometimes in some ways I participated in, you know. I wonder, that's been crazy. I wonder what, like, what was your guys' inspiration back then? When learning new things, when you didn't even know what was possible, you know what I mean? Is it just creativity? And yeah, it was. It was a definitely a more of a, a creative kind of a thing. It was. Um, I mean, we we thought of ourselves as artists. We surrounded ourselves with art. Our inspiration came from, you know, music and films and whatever. You know, yeah. books. Well, uh, it's just, you just it's, yeah. You start absorbing art then you could create art, mm, you know, yeah, totally. and that's how we looked at it. I mean, you know, we did not, none of us thought of skateboarding as athletics or that we were athletes. You know? Yeah. Mark Gonzalez, every single fiber in him is art. Everything mm -hmm. he does is art. The way he lives his life is art. The way he walks and talks and carries himself is art. So when you're around somebody like that, there, he's your friend and you're skating with him. You can't help, but I mean, you know, his throwaways are genius. You know, <laughs> yeah. He's stuff he's abandoned and you can make a whole career out of that. <laughs> I just uh, think it's so cool because when I grew up skating, like you were a pro and like there were so many people before me that I could get ideas from, you know what I mean? Like tricks that were possible. Mm -hmm. And imagine being, I couldn't imagine being at a time where you were the people to start really, you had a little bit of inspiration, maybe of tricks before you, but you got well, to take it to that next level. Like right, right. what it really, what it really came down to Kelly was environment. Mm -hmm. You know, it was out there to be redefined. And yeah. We were the generation that redefined it. Um, you know, like hand handrails are like, that's, you're supposed to do that. You know, yeah. <laughs> right. like if you watch the do tour, almost every single trick in street was on a rail. Mm -hmm. Those handrails and those stairs were there for a long time and no one utilized them in that way. And street skating came along and we breathed life into these inanimate objects. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, it's, it's just crazy, man. It's just crazy to have yeah. that and done that stuff. And, um, it's real special. I love it. Definitely. Man. Well, thank you for opening the eyes for everyone else, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Creativity back then. Yeah. That's look what it's got. Look what it's gone to I now. Dude. What did you do, Mike? Look what you look, did. Look what you did. Look what you did. Yeah. Unbelievable. You know what, man? I feel like a proud dad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, I love I mean, it, bro. That's special, man. Hell yeah. Not thank, that many people. Thank you, bro. Shit. No, Not that's that what I'm saying. Thank, thank you, that, dude. That's so, man, that's crazy. Damn. You know, I, lucky to uh, lucky to have run in the circles I ran in, mm. and get people have take me under their wing and allow me to be a part of it, and and then uh, I had a sincere desire to do something real with those opportunities. And mm -hmm. I love skating so much; I just wanted to to promote it and help popularize it in in the most positive sense, which I 
probably repeating stuff I said before. Dude, but all good. My heart, you know. Yeah. Legend, bro. Okay, uh, we got a couple more clips to go through. What about the uh, Ollie uh, Mount Baldy gap? Huh? Is there a good story Ooh. behind that one? Sure. Because this is uh what what, what what what? Oh my gosh, dude! To me, that's terrifying. It's really terrifying. Um, but much like the much like the Brooklyn Banks Ollie, mm. I was in the zone man i mean did you go up there no wanting to do that or were you just there to yeah there was a skater there was a skater that lived in my neighborhood um in long beach uh-huh. that tried it um a week or two before i went and did it okay he fell in the snake pit no <laughs> yeah i don't know how he, he got out of it unscathed somehow wow like he, he literally he can't. Uh, the The ground at Mount Baldy is so rough. Mm. Like the like, because you think about years and years of water draining out of that thing. Totally, right? it just eats up the cement. Um, the ground is just so rough. He right before and and like the Brooklyn Banks, the Brooklyn Banks rounds up. The Baldy Ollie <laughs> rounds down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, you could see that right there. That's sketchy in itself. Where you actually have to take off on the Ollie is pretty far back from the actual edge you know yeah you know what as a skater too you try to go to the very end mm-hmm. to get that the furthest yeah. you can now there was maybe uh you know, remember diego the butcher yeah, absolutely. oh yeah mm-hmm. um there's some somebody says he did it before me mm. but i think he came from the other direction mm. he didn't do it oh coming out of- that would be considered the hard way but, i think the way you're going <laughs> yeah but i don't really like whatever you know like I, at that moment in time, as far as I knew, nobody had done that. Right. Yeah. Right. And I went there. I, it's funny. The kid, well, it wasn't a kid, but it was a skater in my neighborhood that tried it. I saw the video of him like freaking almost die it falling into that hole. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go do it. <laughs> <laughs> but why not do it going the other way? It seems like an easier takeoff. Oh. The other way is a little bit, it's like uphill a little bit. You got to oh, put. Oh, okay. It's so much easier. If you bailed out, you could just land on that embankment. You know what mm, I mean? Right. I mean, you could, you know, eat shit bad, but I mean, your chances are much better coming in the other direction. Yeah. Also, on the other side, where the lip is, is there's like a metal, there's a piece of metal. I don't know. You, I don't know oh, you, you can see it. it. You can see like the, I can going see, back like the, here the, or the, the, no, where you land. Oh, where you land. Metal lip where you land. Hmm. Yeah, you can kind of see it. it. Kind of sticks up a little bit too. It looks like almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, oh. yeah. So the thing is, is too, is like you go into the pipe and it's dark, and you start bombing from way back in the pipe. <laughs> your ass off. Amazing. And uh, and it's really, really rough. Wow. And again, it's like the like the Brooklyn Banks rally. There's no, there's no room. You, once you commit, you're in. You can't stop. Right. You can't stop at the last. They can't just drag your foot like five feet from the. You're falling in the pit. Sure. You know, there's no stopping. So it's got to be a hundred percent in. You know. Yeah, dude. It, to, honestly, it sounds like literally the worst skate spot ever, but also the best spot to get a trick at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Mount Baldy. You know, it's it's a famous spot from like the '70s, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. I've been skating there forever. It's one of the most iconic skate spots in the world. So. To me, it was interesting to do something like this there. Yeah. I, I didn't mean it was right. the worst skate spot, but I, I mean, like the, the scenario of getting to it, getting to it was like yeah, the worst well, scenario. Exactly. Yeah. But see, that what, the point I'm making is that the the difficulties of it weren't something I was concerned about. It was more about like, I'm doing something. At, I'm doing a street trick at Mount Ball. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the snake pit is so infamous. You have to cross it to get to the pipe, you know? Right. And it, like, the real men jump it, you know? <laughs> yeah. most, people, most people put like a piece of wood down and, and, and bridge, bridge themselves. Right. Can you see, is that it on the left side right there? That wood? Like you see right oh, there? I think, I think the photographer was, uh, was Ballard. I think he was sitting on the piece of wood. Oh, oh. Sick. oh on the other side, when he, when you land, I think you can see him. Right. Oh, oh Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's the piece of wood there. He's kind of like sitting on the lip of it. So that's where people would cross. Yeah. Right, right, right. Did you run and jump it too? I don't remember. I pro- Maybe. I must have. Yeah. 
seems like something you would jump before you'd ollie it. Uh, yeah. That was one I didn't really bat an eye at. I just knew I could do it. You just did it. Yeah. You know what's really messed up? At that time, at that time, I had kickflips locked. Mm. And I thought I could probably kickflip this if I give it enough goes. Oh. And I don't I don't know why. It was like the relief of getting the Ollie and everyone was so psyched. I was just I kind of let the idea go, you know, but now nah, it's like now nah, it's like, man, if I kickflip <laughs> And I had, I mean, I had kickflips at that time in that yeah. way, you know, that I could, could have possibly done it. Did anyone ever do a kickflip over that thing? I don't think so. I don't know. I imagine, I mean, what do I know? But I would imagine it would cross my desk. People, this yeah. is one that people talk to me about a lot. Oh, is it? Yeah. Mount Baldy Ollie. Oh yeah. They Especially like... if you skate it there. Right. Like it's one thing to see it on video, but you go there and it's like, you know. I've always wanted to go. I've never been. Yeah, it's no joke. It's, it's a, a it's kind of it's a mission to get up there, mission, right? I it heard is. it's a hike, 15, 20 minute hike up there. Wow. Hey, never too late though, man. We'll go back and kick for a bit. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Snake pit. No I don't comment. Know. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, so now we got this. Isn't really a skate clip, but uh, Raj really wanted. He was like, "We got to talk about this," and obviously, it's probably something that. You get talked to about a lot. It probably gets brought up a lot. He's like nervous to hear what you're going to say. Right Sorry, now. Mike. I know. Sorry, Mike. Like, what is this? But no, the uh, running through the graveyard. I think we touched on it in your episode uh, in front of the Nine Club as well. But yeah, um, this they, is like, well, why did you move to Iowa has replaced why did you run through a graveyard? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I love it, dude. <laughs> this graveyard was a graveyard at the like the church I went to Sunday school at when I was a kid. Oh, man. So it, um, graves date back pretty far. I think like civil war or even before, mm. uh, Craig Stesick was with Stacy Peralta filming the public domain video part. Mm -hmm. And there's somebody buried in that graveyard that was of some significance to Stesick. Oh, interesting. Huh. And so he wanted to visit that graveyard and then they had the idea that, I would run through it, um, which I didn't, you know, I didn't understand. Okay. So it was kind of like a, something that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, more so from when I saw the video and then the way people don't ask me, why did you, why did you do that? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's skateboarding was changed. Like, you know, this was, uh, this was after animal chin, mm -hmm. right. And animal chin, uh, it was heavily produced video. There's acting and, you know, um, right. I loved animal chain. I thought it was great. And it too. But, but by the time public domain came out, I didn't, I didn't want to be an animal chain anymore. I was looking to what came next. And I just kind of felt like me running through the graveyard. I didn't, it was so, it was, they had their reasons mm. and I wasn't on the same wavelength. I didn't understand. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I mean, if, if I was an animal chin and I was, and I was an animal chin, by the way, mm -hmm. um, but if I was directed in animal chin to do something, then I would just go, Oh, it's part of the storyline, but this was my video part. Mm. And, and I had also, I, I viewed myself as an artist and my skating was beginning to mature. And so I didn't really understand what was happening with that. So um, for years, it was like a, a thing. Mm -hmm. And I made a thing about it. It was like, I was like, you know, my next video, uh, Speed Freaks, I kind of like made fun of myself or made fun of the running through the graveyard at the beginning of that video, um, which also was like taking a shot at my previous sponsor. And okay. So it was like, uh, it was like, uh, <laughs> like, what do they do in rap where they, you know, like, like a uh, battle? Battle like this, this. Oh, yeah. this <laughs> and you got a diss track. Yeah, yeah it was a, a sneak diss. Track. It was a sneak my diss. Speed Freaks video, my Speed Freaks video part was like a diss track against. <laughs> it's like a diss against yourself almost, or your old well, sponsor. No, it was like, yeah, it was like I made it clear that like they made me. Oh, right. okay, okay. Right. So I was trying to distance myself from it. Yeah, uh, but man, it's just like it's just talking about it. It's just so. It's like ancient history, man. Yeah. And and the thing is, is I love that video part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I don't have a problem with the graveyard thing right. at all. Like I just don't. And, and, and I don't know if it was just the time in my life or what, or the pressures I felt exterior pressures from my friends and industry talk about it or, you know, but maybe I never had a problem with it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it was just like, I made a thing out of it because I felt like it was a thing. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe because you did, they were telling you what to do, you didn't really want to do it or you didn't understand it. So it was a big part of that time in my life where I was shrugging off. I was shrugging the industry off of me. Mm. And, um, and so I, I would say things that, you know, would be, could be controversial or something. Gotcha. Cause I didn't care. Right. Like I, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't see into the future. I couldn't see that. I would be a pro skater for another year. Right. Or yeah. Sometimes I didn't even want to be a pro skater for another year. I just wanted the right. whole thing was like, uh, I was like super, uh, um, I just wasn't comfortable. I wasn't comfortable with all the pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, w- I became like, uh, you know, there was a the moment in time when I was, when I left Pal Peralta and went to world industries, I was like, uh, like, you know, just, the guy that everyone talked about mm. and, and the more I tried to, the more I tried to shrug it off my shoulders, the heavier the burden became. Oh, it was like the act of not wanting to be that guy made me more that guy. Right. It, was, it was a strange time in my life. And the graveyard thing became a talking point at that time. So it stuck so hard with mm-hmm. people. Right. Oh, when you ran through the graveyard, you know, big brother talked about me running through the graveyard, like every other issue. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, well, I, I, I did that to myself. You know? yeah. Yeah. I could have sworn when I walked up, Roger looked at Chris and was like, you got to talk about the graveyard. Is that what you said, Rog? Yeah. Yeah. I heard him saying that. And, and to be honest, that wasn't, I never knew about this. Like this is way before my time. Mm-hmm. So like that must've meant so much to Roger. This being honest, you know what I mean? Like, that's something Roger grew up on, and that shaped him. New his oh, skinny, is, oh his I love I love public domain watching it. It was well. like it was like always like what made me remember it more was when you said in Speed Freaks like why would I want to run through a graveyard? I never want to run through a graveyard. Mm-hmm. So then I wanted yeah. to know the story about it. Yeah. Right. Okay. See. You know I, what? What a spoiled brat. You know. I didn't want to run through the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a Pal Peralta video, bro. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with questioning though, dude. Like you just want to know, like why? Wait, what's the purpose of it? Why am I doing this? Yeah, you just ask I questions. A, it's called B-roll there's now. A, there's know, a lot right? of sides to it. There's a lot of sides to it. You know, I could I could say, oh, I was a spoiled brat. I could say, no, dude, I was an artist and I didn't want to do it. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, both are kind of valid. <laughs> sure, sure. Seriously, you know? uh, those guys were trying to make a great video, right? And Essek had a reason. But see, the thing, the problem that I had, and it would have probably fallen on deaf ears, is they didn't articulate to me why I was doing it. They, when, and when I questioned it, they're like, you, you just do what we say to do. Mm-hmm. Oh. Hold on a second. This isn't the skateboarding I signed up for. Right. You know, but it actually is the skateboarding I signed up for because I signed a 10 year contract with that company. There you go. <laughs> Damn, they were no joke back then. 10 years. Like, okay, we got yeah. you for 10 years. Damn. Get them. What year was this, by the way? That was that was June of nineteen eighty eight, just before I turned eighteen. Wow. I love oh, how you can remember the even the month, mm. you know? They came out and filmed me. Um, and then a couple of days later I flew to uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and I skated in a co- pro contest in Louisville. I skated vert, street, and freestyle. Whoa. I skated all three disciplines. All terrain. And Dude. then uh, I took the board that I was skating in public domain. I took that board apart and I gave it to a kid who was a flow rider on the Pal Peralta team at that time, Sean Mortimer. Oh. I, I took the board apart and handed it to him. So here, I skated this board for the video we're working on. He kept the board, had it for years and years and years and years and years. In like early to mid 2000s, I think early 2000s, he came to me. I had a warehouse in Long Beach. He came there and asked me to uh, sign some items for a, a skateboard museum he was putting together in Vancouver. And he goes, oh, can you sign this board? And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, it's your board from public domain. I was like, why do you have it? <laughs> wow. 
Wow. But uh, it's a, it's a really great story. But you know, long story short, he ends up gifting the board back to me. Oh, wow. wow, that's awesome. Which was really sweet of him. Um, I had never. I've. I don't have. I mean, I do have some memorabilia, mm-hmm. but I haven't really held on to a lot, especially boards. I've always given my board. I ride a board. I give it away. Give it away. I ride a board. I give it away. I don't have. A, you know, my friend Christian Speedtech has saved every board he's ever skated. And wow. dates them and everything. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's, amazing. that's a lot yeah. to do for sure. But uh, yeah, Sean Mortimer gave me the board back because he oh, saw the connection I had to it. Wow. It's just like really special. I love it. But so so then after I after Louisville, then I flew to England with Lance Mountain, Steve Caballero, and Tommy Guerrero, and we did a UK tour. First time that was my first time overseas. Um, I remember all of this stuff. It's vivid. That's insane. So, man. I love and it. And we went to Scotland and we were doing an autograph signing at a skate shop in Scotland and people were talking to me and I was just looking at them like, okay. And I just shake my head and I would just sign whatever they put in front of me. And they kept going. And I turned to Lance. And I said, Hey man, what language do they speak? Here? <laughs> yeah. And he said, it's English. <laughs> wow. It is. <laughs> I didn't. Have, I had. I my ears weren't tuned in. They to weren't too bright, and it's, it's so harsh and deep, and like you know, it almost sounds like a different language. Yeah. And then we went from there. We went to Germany for a, a pro contest, and um, I turned eighteen when we were in the UK. Amazing. Damn. Um, you know, man, it's living the dream. Man. I love it's it, bro. Wow, wow I dude. love it, dude. This is why we could talk to you for hours, bro. But listen, we got to one. Let's do one more thing because this is also something that. Uh, even Raj was like, man, you got to talk to him about the vert stuff. Cause you were, so, you're a great vert skater, Yeah, dude. you know, killing it at vert. Wow. My wife filmed this. <laughs> what? Really? Amazing. Oh, all this vert footage is filmed by my wife. That's so amazing. Rad. High school sweethearts? Uh, sort of. We met when we were 18, uh, 18 amazing right. Right. just outside just out of high school yeah, yeah. wow well, she, was dating, she was dating jason lee but uh i said no more of that oh <laughs> <laughs> wow. okay That's amazing okay. <laughs> yeah i like that i like that <laughs> but i just you know Although my wife didn't film this part this is filmed by spike spike jones yeah amazing you're, you're like hey wife just stand in the middle of the, yeah, <laughs> the yeah, ramp and i'll just go around you but you, I mean, listen, you're a fabulous vert skater. Um, any, was there not a lot of vert back then? Was it just harder to skate no, or? I, uh, I always talk about um, being a street skater. Mm. And, you know, that's kind of what, when I think of skate, I my lens of skateboarding is through street skating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But my heroes were vert skaters. Right. Mm. And, um, and I did have access to vert ramps. I mean, Tom Graholski lived two towns over from me and he had a ramp in his backyard and that ramp was skatable every Wednesday and Saturday open to the public. Oh, wow. Amazing. Um, and there was other ramps that popped up as things progressed in our, in our, you know, central New Jersey, Mm -hmm. Uh, lots of ramps popped up. So we always skate at ramps, but see, we, from an identity kind of standpoint, we saw ourselves as street skaters. Like that was, that was the emerging thing. And that was the thing we can most relate to. And was, and it was ours, you know, first skating had existed. Right. Street skating was brand new and we were creating it, mm-hmm. you know, not just, and I say, we, it's not just me, Mark Gonzalez and Nas Coppas and Tommy Guerrero or Nara Tresson and Jesse Martinez. Sure. Well, man, it was every kid in every city around the world. Right. We were all participating in the birth of this thing, mm-hmm. and um, so that so that's really that's how I that's how I always view skateboarding is through that lens. But I skated vert, I skated everything. If you could skate it, I skated it, and um, and I love vert skating. Mm-hmm. And um, and I had access. To, I mean, I was surrounded by great vert skaters in New Jersey: Tom Graholski, Jim Murphy. Chuck Treese, Bernie O'Dowd, the list goes on and on. There's just so many. We had a ramp called the Barn Ramp mm. that, you know, we skate in the wintertime. And, and I saw some of the most heaviest, heated sessions I've ever seen of that ramp. Um, I think with uh, the first time I went to California, to uh, I stayed with Lance Mountain 
uh, it was Christmas break of 1986 going into 87. And uh, I'd been out for the contest in Oceanside, but the first time I came to like visit and stay, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just wanted to skate his ramp. And he's like, oh, but I'm supposed to take you street skating. You know, we got to go, we have to go do work. You know, right? <laughs> I want to skate mountain matter, man. And so I went out there and I started skating his rap and he's watching me. And he's like, wait, how do you know how to do these tricks? Mm -hmm. I was like, I feel them, bro. Like, <laughs> I have to do them, you know? And he was just like blown away that, that I, that, that I, there was already this idea that at the time that the new street skaters didn't respect. Mm -hmm. the oh, they, okay. They were, you know what I mean? It was right. like, yeah that's all passe. And now this is, you know, but these guys were my heroes. Like Lance was my hero. And, uh, and so I just wanted to skate his ramp. And, um, I was actually, I told you, I skated that contest in Louisville. Yeah. You know, for street and freestyle. Um, the, it was another, another thing with like skating for Palo Peralta is they just wanted me to be a street skater. And I kept, I turned pro at a vert contest. I got last place. I that was it. problem. Wow. That was problematic. I was supposed to be the street skater that wins contests, and I'm losing vert contests. Yeah, I'm getting <laughs> and uh, the thing is, I just wanted to skate, man. I I didn't care. Right. And uh, and at the contest uh, in Louisville, I skate. I entered. I was told I can't skate the vert contest, but I entered it anyway, and I skated it. And after the contest, Stacy Peralta came out to me. He's like, "You're actually really good." on the vert ramp you know he's like his first time it like he didn't want he didn't want to see me skating the vert ramp and then when he actually just sat back and watched me you know i think the one thing that uh you know i just brought a street skater approach to vert mm -hmm. um ollieing into tricks and grabbing behind the foot you know right. i mean all the grabs were were at the foot or in front of the foot interesting mm -hmm. yeah were the other skaters looking at you like, what tricks is he yeah, doing? You would, you know, guys would have like wheel bite on their hands because they'd be grabbing right. Or the, they would go in the air and the, they would stop their wheel from spinning with their hands. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And when, once we started ollieing into grabs, it would just, the way that the board would level out from an ollie, it would just put it so that you would be more so behind your foot. Mm. Right. It just, it really just started with the Ollie on the street and grabbing your board. Mm -hmm. So when I took that, like right there, I yeah. took that same approach to vert. Yeah. If you back this one up a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look at the motion. It's an Ollie. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and then there's the grab. Yeah. Wow. People weren't, people weren't doing airs like that before this. They were just kind of yeah. flying out. Were they like yeah. this early grab, I guess I you would say? The first, the first time I saw Steve Bear skate vert, he was a vert skater yeah um he he ollied into everything mm -hmm. like that style of skating that i did in rubbish heap which is the footage we're watching mm -hmm. like that ended up actually it's crazy i mean mike frazier has told me that this part like made him want to be a vert skater oh, wow he's dude. My favorite vert skater of all time that's incredible yeah i mean uh but i saw it when i when i first time i saw steve barrow skate i was like wow and i could see the influence you know but what he did with it was far beyond what I, I you know, what I was capable of imagining myself doing. Um, same with Frazier. First time I saw Mike Frazier skate, I was like, wow, this guy's like the best verse skater I've ever seen. That's what's funny too. You never like in my era, you never thought of Steve Barra as a vert skater. Mm -hmm. I no. saw he did it, but you know, then he got gnarly, gnarly on street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that was he's the first, I think he's the first guy who started as a vert skater yeah. that transitioned to street yeah mm -hmm. well like 100 percent, i'm i'm a street skater. and then like left it behind and didn't even yeah. think about yeah going back that's awesome but he I, was rad on vert yeah. i mean he was rad i love the fact that you like all your heroes were vert skaters but here you are pioneering street skating yeah, yeah. well we couldn't have done it without those guys i know the but trick, i just love it every trick that we took to the streets started on a vert ramp you yeah. know or or Rodney Mullen freestyle, yeah, yeah, no, mm. but um, but most of it was vert inspired, you know, uh, it just was, and 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 even if the trick wasn't vert inspired, well, the style or the attitude or you know, there's so many great personalities in skating, uh, 
the first skaters of the of the eighties, man, they're just like, I mean, got, like, pick your region, Florida, right, Northeast, Texas, California, Arizona, Midwest. I mean, there was yeah, incredible was skaters from every region, and they all had different styles. Right. And at street skaters, something brand new. We were able to sample all those styles, all those attitudes, all that you know. And then apply that to the environments that we were growing up in. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that was one of the, when, when public domain came out, most of the, the, I got the, I got this incredible feedback from people around the world because um, I was skating in New Jersey and New York and I was skating in a way that was adapting to those environments. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the smooth asphalt of California. It wasn't sort of, um, you know, not to over idealize it, but I mean, you know, it's kind of like a perfect environment for skateboarding, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so when people in Germany and England and Italy and places like that saw public domain, they saw me skating in, in, in an environment and in a way in that environment that they could relate to. Oh yeah. <clears throat> definitely. And previous to that, they were, they loved everything obviously that came out all the videos and they, they, they absorbed it, absorbed, absorbed it, but it wasn't always relatable. That's the biggest impact is when stuff is relatable. Totally dude. It's the biggest mm-hmm. impact. That's why I could never relate to vert skating. Cause there was never a vert ramp in front of my house. I can't relate yeah. to Nigel Houston. I can't relate <laughs> to a lot of people, you know, but when I saw a video of people skating like a little curb or a manual pad, I was like, Oh yeah, I got that up front. I Very can kinda... relatable yeah, man. For sure. Well, that was, a big part uh, consciously a big part of my skate career was uh, accessibility, relatability. It's like when I came on the nine club mm. and we did the five hour thing, I knew that talking about the beginnings, yeah, that's relatable. Everyone has a start in skating. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. That's why I think that's why that, that episode meant a lot to people because they could, they had. They all have a similar story. I mean, it doesn't necessarily lead to a pro career, but those initial experiences with skating are, are universal. Let me tell you something. We never really intended for you know the nine club to be that, but it kind of evolved into this timeline from like their first board into the present time, and I think it's just fascinating because everybody, everybody's story is not the same. You know, everybody has a different experience and how they got started in skateboarding. And I I just, I love the timelines, you know, it's become this thing that I I thoroughly enjoy, you know, and like you said, it's relatable, you know, everybody gets their first skateboard, everybody, you know, learns these tricks and then some people go off into different jobs and whatever. People always come up to me, Mike, bro, my first board was a Rob Roscoff. Yeah. I had a Nash execute. They they just unsolicited they want to tell me what they want to tell you right (laughs) dude i I was so stoked the other day i was skating flat ground down by the beach and uh i saw a little girl she was just learning how to skate and like doing little ollies and like 180s and i'm like i got so happy just to know that like dude this girl's about to see like this new world Mm. of skateboarding where Mm. you like you don't even know exists and then you start learning that's when you get like you just get hooked on skating Mm -hmm. dude this open canvas of those learning things and that's that's a really special moment in in your life when you realize how much you love skateboarding. I always get you know? stoked sure. when I see people learning how to skate. You know, yeah. Even pushing down the street, you could just tell they're just they're enjoying it. They're having fun. They're. I I just I love it, man. I love I seeing it. I love seeing people just use it as transportation too. Because I see like a random dude just pushing down the street. I'm like, dude, this is rad. You're just pushing like you don't even know how to skate. You're pushing, right? You know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I think that's what makes uh, what you guys do so great. Um, is that you're not jaded. You mm. still love skating and you oh, still yeah. love, skating. you know, it'd be very easy to have a, a, a skate specific podcast or something mm. and have a to and be, be with it, be in the skateboard industry and have a very jaded view of all of this. Right. Sure. And there's an audience for that. Absolutely. Definitely. But you guys don't do that. And I think it's a real credit to you guys, Chris, especially you with, Thank you know, being in the main seat there. Yeah. Um, you set a certain tone that, um, like, I, I find it to be very meaningful what you guys do. And I think, uh, well, I just want to say thanks, man. I, it's awesome. I appreciate yeah. that. I, I, I just think that I'm, I, I, I like learning, you know, I like learning everybody's story and I'm, 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 I'm truly interested in what they 
you know, have accomplished and what they, you know, their upbringing and what brought them to, to the, to sitting here in this chair. Like, I just think it's fascinating, you know, and we can talk about stuff that, but we want to, we want to celebrate skateboarding, you know, we want to celebrate it, you know, what, why, what, what's the point of talking shit on something you love? Yeah. Well, you do it, you do celebrate it. And that's, uh, you know, that ripples out, man. People, it's, it's, I, I love this, man. I love, I love what you guys do. And I love the um, sort of culture that you create around it. Yeah. And I think it has a real positive impact out there. Um, I mean, I've seen, I've seen the change through the years. There's far more positivity yeah. in skateboarding since the nine club started than there was before the nine club. I don't know um, if we could attribute it to <laughs> us, but I coming from you, Mike, I truly deeply appreciate those words. Man, you know, yeah, we, we just, we sit here and we, we just try to have fun, you know, and again, celebrate skateboarding and mm-hmm. celebrate the people who are involved with skateboarding. It's not just the skaters, it's the photographers, it's the filmers, it's the team managers. It's, there's so much mm-hmm. that goes into it, you know, and I, uh, I love it. I want to say something too about like, we're talking about earlier about timing of like, you know, your board company you're doing and everything like that. Like, I feel like the nine club is the same in the same thing where like, this, this started at the right time. Ooh. If we did it earlier, it might have not come across the same. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we might have been the same people, but it might not have been the right time. Timing's everything. Yeah. There were a couple little podcasts here and there, but we kind of just took it and ran with it, you know? It's, I think uh, the timing was good. And randomly enough, it's like this team we put together just worked yeah. out. I I, it's so weird. We got Jerron here now. Yeah. Jerron. I mean, I don't even know how that happened. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's how we don't know how it happened either. I just lived here. Next thing you know, I'm on the show. Chris is coming over here all the time to get yeah. his old throwback footage from Roger. And then like, well, I had to post some TBTs. You know <laughs> I had to post some TBTs, Mike. <laughs> I was like, Chris is here again. What's your, what are you guys doing? Man, we're just trying to put this. <laughs> Something's coming together. But I appreciate that, Mike. It, it means a lot to me. Uh, I'm sure it, it even means a lot to our community, man, because our community, yeah, right. we wouldn't even be here without them. Uh, the people who watch the show and listen to it and engage with us. It, it's It's been an incredible, incredible journey like no other, you know, so definitely yeah. thankful. Definitely thankful. Definitely. And definitely. with all that being said, Mike, listen, September... Can we count on it? If you come yeah. down here in September, you're going to bring your new Mike V, Katiba, uh, Katiba, Kariuma, <laughs> your new Mike V, Kariuma shoe. We're going to sit down in this chair right here next to All Jerome. five colorways. Mm-hmm. Bring all five. Mm-hmm. Bring even the samples you're working on, okay? Because we're going to yeah. dive into that. No, but I think I love the Zoom. I love catching up with you. But you being here in person and all your stories, and I could sit here for another five hours easily, mm-hmm. easily. And I'm sure every all of our listeners and viewers could too. Definitely. September. Well, you want to lock in a date right now? What's going on? I'll schedule with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The best feedback I got was uh, people talking about how the the five hour episode got them through some long road trips or yeah. airplane yeah. flights mm-hmm. or stuff. It's so cool, man. dude. So rad. You know what the funny thing was is like, man, I, like I said before, I think I, you know, if I see something that's five hours, you know, and like, I got a lot of people saying like, oh man, I turned that on and I was enthralled and I literally got through it in one sitting, yeah. you know? And I'm like that you sat down for five hours at your home or at your office and you watched five hours mm-hmm. that, that, I mean, to me, that's, it's insane. No, uh, it's dude, no, no, no. Five hours of anything, yeah. you know, it's, it's, but it's just a testament to, you know, the stories and the, cause like I'm enthralled right now and it's two yeah. and a half hours gone by and I'm yeah. like, oh my God, well, we'll, we'll wrap this up, but I can easily sit here for another four. Totally. Yeah. I'm a couple hours ahead of you guys. I'm approaching bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Kelly tell you we're going no later than 3 a.m.? Yeah. <laughs> No, but we appreciate you, Mike. Man, we have it, all these other clips to talk about. But in September, you promised you're going to come here. You promised. And thanks for making the exception on to hang out with us on Zoom. You yes. know what I mean? I, straight up. I really, I can't. This is so hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 but you had a good you killed time, killed right? You had a good time, it. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got, yeah, it's been great. Uh, I mean, you guys are great. I'm stoked you're on a part of things, man. Yeah, like, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. I wish bro. I was in the room with you, bro. I mean, you're, co- you're coming in September. We're going to yeah. be doing this soon, bro. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I just, like I said, when we started, man, you just, you got, you, 
you've always embodied the stoke of skating. It's just it radiates from you. And I've always, uh, from a distance, you know, I just be, always been a fan of that. Man, you just gave me a damn fucking thing. <laughs> right Jesus. I had an out of body experience That's right there. Man. That was amazing, yeah. man. I appreciate you, man. Straight yeah, it's up. No, I mean, it's, it, it's, to me, it's like a, it makes sense that you're part of the nine club. Because all those things I just said about how I feel about the nine club, right? Uh, like, it, it's of course, of course, you'd end up sitting there humbled, yeah. humbled by that, bro. Really. I, I've never seen Jerron, Matt. I, I've I've told him before. I'm like, just get mad at me right now. Just uh, like start yelling at me or something, bro. Like I've never seen this. But I want to see it. <laughs> You know what to you, man. I, what never, I just see him spit like real stuff like not spit real stuff you know what i mean like he says some real stuff and it, when it comes out of your mouth it's like i listen to it and i take it in because you you say some real stuff dude yeah, I try like to. Yeah. <laughs> no but you like know. you know like uh i look at you like a mentor as well i listen to what you like i appreciate everything Jerron has man. to say so Definitely. always have so yeah. thank you Kelly. Well, i would yeah. imagine that if Jerron gets mad he's probably got a damn good reason that's true There's some passion behind it if it is for sure yeah <laughs> and like i said it's very rare it, it is. is you know it is yeah but like i said man thank you so much mike those those words mean the most and you know i i couldn't be happier more happier than being in this place with you guys and really discussing skateboarding, which I love so much. Mm -hmm. And it's very obviously near and dear to all of our hearts. Absolutely. So, you know, the, the passion is still there, even though I don't get to do it as much as I love. And I just loved our, our industry at the end of the day. And, you know, I'm thankful to yeah. be here to be talking with you, bro. Really. Hundred percent, one thousand percent. We had to correct you on 1, that. One thousand percent, bro. Where are you being, Chris? Come on. I don't know. <laughs> but Mike, dude, thank you so much for stopping and chatting with us. Yeah, um, sure. We'll see you in September, dude. I, and, I, and I'm looking forward to it. I too, well. bro. Of course, man. Mike Valley, everybody, huh? Yes. Yeah.